Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Assalamu alaikum, Ramathwai Abirkatu. Peace be upon everyone who's watching. My name is Kenny Barmer. I'm the author of the book, Consider Islam, Disproving the Patriots of Propaganda, and the forthcoming book, the upcoming book, Everything is a test. Truth has been made clear from falsehood. And you're watching Kenny Bomer live on Consider This TV where truth has been made clear from falsehood. And tonight we have a debate with Brother um, uh, Oga Prince, excuse me, Oga, Alhamdulillah, Oga Yates rather, and Kareem the Tutor. And uh, I'll introduce the brothers here in a moment. But uh, before we do so, I would like to ask you to check out the links for the GoFundMe for the Change for Change Foundation. Uh, if you could make a donation there for some water wells to be built in areas in the world where water is scarce. And also, um, if you could give to the Dawa Fund, I'll post a link for the Dawa Fund in, in this, this link, inshallah, God willing. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our God or Creator, reward you for your intentions. And if you can't give, your prayers will be sufficient. So as we proceed, I'm going to go ahead and introduce the two brothers. And we'll get into the topic of this debate, which is, who is Jesus? And of course, we're talking from an Islamic standpoint and a Christian standpoint. And who is Jesus? And um, bear with me one second. Okay, so as we proceed, uh, our Christian debater is Brother Olga Yates, he wanted to be referred to as the Christian prophet, Olga Yates, the man of reasoning, and uh, he'll be debating the topic from the Christian side on who is Jesus. And our Muslim debater is Brother Kareem Ubaidullah. Ubaidullah holds a general diploma in Islamic studies from the IOU, as well as a number of certificates in various Islamic subjects. Brother Ubaidullah was born into a Hispanic Christian family and eventually reverted to Islam at the age of 17. Ubaidullah spent several years studying the Arabic language and now has joined the ranks of just a very few Latino Muslims in America who are fluent in ancient Quranic Arabic. Ubaidullah is currently competing, excuse me, completing his memorization of the entire Quran and has also completed the memorization of a number of uh, classical Islamic texts that have been written for all students of knowledge. Lastly, Brother Ubaidullah is currently promoting the GoFundMe campaign that we hope can benefit the wider Muslim community by helping to spread the correct understanding and recitation of the Holy Quran. And I'll also be posting that, that link um, in, during the, the course of the debate, inshallah. And so let's talk about the, uh, the format of the debate. We discussed that yesterday. And so we're, we're, we're gonna have a seven minute openings. Olga's gonna begin the, the, uh, the discussion with his seven minute opening. And then we're gonna go into 15 minute uh, presentation, the original presentations, and then 12 minute rebuttals from each gentleman, each brother, and then a, a seven minute second rebuttal, and then a seven minute closing from each brother. And then we're gonna have a, a period of five questions, a period where they're gonna ask each other five questions each. We're gonna have uh, about a minute and a half, maybe two minutes for uh, the answer to be given, and uh, 30 to 45 minute, or excuse me, 30, 30 to 45 second, uh, response to to those answers. Uh, at the end of that, after we after the five questions, if the the two debaters would like, we will take questions from uh, people that are, are are viewing the the debate on Facebook as well as in the Zoom platform. So, um, with that being said, if uh, the brothers have no uh, questions or any areas of concern, we can go ahead and proceed. Uh, but both of you are familiar with the sound of the uh, of the timer. And like I, I mentioned uh, yesterday, uh, as we proceed through the debate, um, once you hit the, once you hear the timer go off, please try to, to summarize within about 15 seconds or so. I know that's, that's sometimes sometimes difficult uh, when you're right in the middle of a thought, but uh, just remember that we have about a 15 second window there to try to try to to come to a conclusion, and. Um, you know, we'll try to be a little bit liberal with that, but but try to keep that within that time frame if you can. And uh, of course, we're going to have no insults and no um, derogatory comments. And uh, I'll try to be as fair as possible, inshallah, God willing. And I, I do um, pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses each of you brothers. And before I go further, I do want to 
I do want to say that I bear witness there's no God other than Allah. And I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his final servant and seal of all prophets. And I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our creator, I pray that he blesses uh, both of you brothers for your intentions. And I pray that he accept all of our, our efforts in trying to uh, convey uh, the truth. And, you know, and uh, we're supposed to come together as Muslims and Christians and, and uh, come to common terms as we're directed in the Quran, come to common terms between us and you. And when it's all said and done, you have your religion, we have ours. And uh, we just hope that uh, people are influenced by what they hear um, on both sides. And uh, that we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our creator, um, guides us all to more wisdom and understanding. And, um, has mercy on each and every one of us on the day of judgment. So with that being said, Brother Ovi Yates, uh, Christian prophet Ovi Yates, if you would like to proceed with your seven minute opening, I'm gonna go ahead and unmute you and we will proceed from there. Okay. It seems I don't hear anything yet. Yeah, it seems we lost Olga. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, I would like to, you know, give thanks and praises to the Most High Yahweh, uh, God and Father for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, I want to thank Him for uh, giving me the voice to speak and to represent truth. Uh, first, uh, I just want to. Let my uh, opponent, uh, my brother um, in the flesh, know that hey, something's gonna be said, and it, you might take it as offense 
I, I'm not trying to offend anyone. Uh, I'm trying to be as truthful as possible using um, available literature to prove my point. I would like to start off by saying without hesitation, because of the love I have for mankind and the love for the real God, Yahweh, there is a dangerous creature hiding behind the God of Islam and the prophet of Islam. And this creature is Allahu Akbar. Alhamdulillah. But it, it seems, uh, Olga, we, we lost you there for a minute after you said the word Islam. We lost you there. Okay. So I said there is a, a dangerous creature hiding behind the God of Islam and the prophet of Islam. And this creature is an enemy to the truth and an enemy to the truth of Jesus Christ. Um, Mohammed was a confused soul led by a dangerous enemy who one minute is saying that Jesus is hmm. ah, we lost him. How about can, can, can you hear me? Yes, I mean. We, it, is there a limit on how many times we can lose him before I, I kind of jump in there and, and, and start while he, he gets this stuff in order? I have no problem waiting for him, but I can also take his place. All right. Don't waiting. jump in, brother. Don't and don't mute the mic. It's my time, but don't mute the mic. No, no, brother. Um, you, you 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 fell off again and you fell right. You okay, Let, leave it open because if he's gonna jump in and, and take up my no, time, no, don't he, jump in. Yeah, he's not going to jump in. I'm not going to allow him um, to jump in. We're not. He's not going to jump in. But he was saying, okay. if so, you if you keep la if you keep, let, let, keep let's, talking off. So go go ahead. And don't, yeah, don't worry about the time. Unless, as, as unless right you're going to make it. Yeah, don't worry about the time. Talking as about right each now. other. And yeah. What what, I, what I'm trying to say is, I'm going to allow you to go ahead and, and give your full opening. So if, if at whatever point you feel like you need to to start over, please start over. We want to give you your full amount of time. And I realize you haven't, there's some technical difficulties there, but just, it, we lost him again. Uh, okay. I wonder, I wonder if, uh, if um, it might be best that he just doesn't turn his camera on and he just does his audio. Yeah, I agree. Oh, good. Yeah, what did you say? Yeah, was, we were saying that be, because of the, the technical difficulty you have in there with the snow, maybe it would be best if you just turn the camera off. I hate to do that, but to, maybe just turn the camera off and just use the audio if it's going to keep falling okay. off. Because every, every time you fall off, then I have to go back and unmute you again. And um, I hate to I hate to. Have okay, to, that's all right. Okay, so, so if okay, you want. Okay, so. Start, start fresh with your opening if you'd like to, and we'll just proceed from there. That way you, you, you can say everything that you want to say. Okay. Let, let, let. Even the audio is, is troubling right now. Yeah. Ah, alhamdulillah. Yeah, it doesn't show that he's in, even in the room. No, he's, he's in the room. Yeah, um, this thing is running in and out. I don't yeah. know what's going on with it. Yeah. It keeps saying that you're using device something. I don't know what's going on with that device thing. It's telling me that I'm using. Okay, uh, let's let's see how we can deal with this. Um, how uh, is? Do you hear us uh, without any break in it, or also you can't yeah. hear us? He said um, you're using device audio. I don't know what that means. I have no does it, idea. I turn does it off give my you, audio. Does it give you an it. option to choose a? Can you choose a different option? When that when that pops up, can you choose a different option? What you're saying? 
I'm, I'm saying whenever that, that message pops up to you, are you able to choose a different option? Okay. All right. Let, let's see if this will work here, what, what we, I'm doing right now. Yeah. And, and since okay. this isn't your time, since it, this isn't your time, I, you know, it just seemed like you, you, you forgot that the debate was uh, who is Jesus. So I just wanted to throw that back for, you know, to get you back on yeah. track. No, I'm, 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 I'm on track. I'm on track. But I, I have to establish what is behind people saying that. So you don't want to establish who is Jesus first or who is your yeah, Jesus? I'm going to establish who is Jesus. Because <laughs> it looked like you just wanted to attack, you know, Islam from the very no, 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 beginning. No, no, no. I don't want to attack Islam. But it, you're coming from an Islamic perspective. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to show you something. Okay, okay, that's fine. This is not okay. a attack this is just making facts known and then i go to my point right now right now you sound we're hearing you just great right now so do you want to try turning the camera on just for the sake of let's try it let's yeah, try it one more time try to turn your camera on and let's see uh let's see what happens with okay you. okay so let let's start fresh inshallah we'll, we'll start fresh Give your full introduction, and, and we'll proceed from there. And uh, hopefully, you know. can you can you see me? Yes, yes. Okay. okay. So. Okay, just start. Let's start, um, start fresh and new. It'll, it'll humble it up. Okay, and we'll just take it from uh, there. Okay. okay. So, what I was saying is that it, it's not an attack. I don't want my uh, opponent to believe that this is an attack. But I, I'm, I want to show where this is coming from, where was is is, is behind the idea that um, trying to distort the fa the fact of who Jesus is. So I'm you know I'm saying that Muhammad was confused soul led by a dangerous enemy. One moment he is saying that Jesus is God. And the next moment, he is saying that Jesus is not. Let's look at the Quranic verse below, and we will see where Muhammad actually confessed that Jesus is God. If you look at, um, I'm going Sayy International, Quran 9, verse 31. In that very surah, we read, at the very ayat, we read. They have uh, taken their scholars and monk as a Lord beside Allah and is uh, and the messi messenger and the Messiah, sorry, and the Messiah, son of Mary. So that Quran verse, verse 9, verse 31, is saying they have taken their scholars and monk as Lord beside Allah and the Messiah, son of Mary. The translators have to insert also in order to correct Muhammad. So right from the get-go, just as the, the Bible told us uh, um, in, um, that every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. That's exactly what we see there. Every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. Um, if we look at the Bible, the way the, the way the Bible tells us, because the debate may come from a, uh, from my brother from a Muslim perspective, but from me, it's coming from a biblical perspective. If you go to the book of um, John, chapter one, verse one, you see, it's, it says, "In the beginning, in the beginning, man, from the beginning of time." there was a Logos and the Logos was with God and the Logos was God. And the same Logos that was God, according to verse two says, E, E was in the beginning. So what we see, the, the Logos that we are talking about is a person. The Logos is not just, oh, it's a word as Muslim want you to believe, oh, it's just a word. According to the scriptures that are available before Muhammad came along, the Logos is a, 
a person. You go on to verse three of the same John one, ver, uh, and you go to verse three, the Logos is creator. According to that verse, it says, and there is nothing that was created that was created by him. Also 10 support that. Then what happened to the Logos? The Logos that was God, then we see what I can do right there. Is this a mere word? Some Bible translated to mean word uh, on the beginning was the word. I cannot say it was just a mere word. Word. What we have to uh, an analyze this and say the Logos can mean the spokesperson or the messenger of God. That's what we have to analyze it. And what happened to that messenger of God, the spokesperson of God? According to verse four, uh, 14 of John 1, it says, and the Logos became flesh. So the Logos became man. And we beheld that man as Jesus. So when you ask, who is Jesus? I'm going to tell you that Jesus is the man that God became. Um, you could go, uh, if you look in uh, 32 verse 30, we're going to show you that this Logos um, existed long, long time ago. But before we go to Genesis 32 verse 30, I would like to go to John 17 verse 5. And what did Jesus say in John 17, verse 5? He says, Now, Father, glorify me with the glory I had with you before the world was created. So what is Jesus confirming exactly what John says in John 1, verse 1, that he existed before creation. A lot of Muslim is going to say, hey, oh, um, he existed in the mind of God. God knows him. No, no. Because Jesus go and say in John um, 6, verse 38, he said, I came down from heaven. You cannot show me nowhere in no scriptures at all where before Muhammad, where any prophet say, I came down from heaven. Jesus was no ordinary man, no ordinary person. Look, look what goes on. Let's go to um, Muslim doesn't realize that God is not an impersonal being. God doesn't stay away from his creation. God is a father to his creation. According to the Quran, Allah is no father. So who is Allah? But anyway, God is a father to his creation. And God, a father is personal to his, uh, 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 his children. He doesn't stay away from his children. He, he do his best to be close to them. We know that the Bible says no one can see God and live. But God, in his infinite mercy and his infinite love, manifests himself in forms that is harmless to his creation, harmless to his children. If we look at the book of Genesis 32, verse 30, we see where God manifests himself to Jacob. What we're going to read here. So Jacob um, called the place Peniel, saying, it is because I saw God face to face, and yet my life was spared. The, what the Muslim would jump to do is say, oh, how could he see God face to face? Because... You, you have 15 seconds, brother. Go ahead. Because God uh, um, put on himself the covering of human, humanity to present himself son to his children at the God of the Bible. Okay. Okay, alhamdulillah. That's great, brother. Uh, thank you for that, that seven-minute opening. And uh, brother Kareem, if you'd like to uh, begin your seven-minute opening, I'll start the, the timer whenever you, you start talking. Yes. Okay. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Tayyip. Okay, so welcome to everyone to our second debate this weekend. Alhamdulillah, we're having fun. And I thank you, uh, Christian Prophet, for uh, coming. And uh, I want to, I want to, I'm kind of caught in between addressing some of the stuff he uh, said, uh, because they were pretty outlandish and, and out there. 
or just going into mine. And, and I think I'm going to stick with my strategy because it's always good to lay the, the groundwork. One thing I noticed in his uh, time is that he went right into the Bible, reading the Bible, surprisingly, to a Muslim, knowing the Muslim doesn't take the Bible as an authority. So Christians, a lot of times, skip the step of even establishing that their book is credible. So you're assuming that I should accept your book in what it's saying without even producing a shred of evidence on why the Bible is credible at all. So I urge you to, to kind of look at that in your next debates because it, it, it's, it's strange. You know, I, I wouldn't assume if I'm speaking in, in a debate forum that Christians believe the Quran and I just start you know, talking all about you know, verses, uh, commanding them to do things as though it's going to mean something to them until they first believe in it. Anyway, with us uh, tonight, we are debating the historical Jesus. That's, that's the true reality of this debate, who Jesus was historically, because historically, when we say historically, we mean the real Jesus. We're not saying who was Jesus in this one story that was written about him, who was he in the mind of some old woman who died as a Christian? When we're saying what was the who was the real Jesus who walked around almost two thousand years ago? Um, so he, what he uh, mentioned in most of his time was what the gospels say about this historical person. Um, however, just to take the gospels and read them as though they're facts is not how historians look at the Bible and look at the words of Jesus. Um, we know that there's many reasons for us to now examine each and every saying of Jesus to see whether he said it. Why? Because uh, in our modern times, walhamdulillah, the praises for God, we have been exposed to the fact that there has been uh, additions to the Bible that have come recently to light, um, which makes the Bible untrustworthy. Some of them we uh, know are the ending of Mark. The last few verses of Mark have been added to the manuscript, and the oldest manuscript did not have those verses. They were added because the story of Mark didn't make sense to end without uh, Jesus, uh, you know, communicating with his disciples or the women even telling anybody that the the the, the burial place was was uh, empty. Um, also, there was there are additions in the Bible well known um, in the New Testament, the women given into adultery, that whole story was fabricated. So that and along with many other reasons uh, or many other additions that have been found in the New Testament, we can't just sit here and start reading all verses from the New Testament as though they're set in stone, even the most important theological uh, statements in the Bible, we have to look into them deeper. Why? L let's give an example of that. The Trinity, the strongest verse of the Trinity, uh, the strongest statement about a Trinity in the New Testament was found to be a forgery. And that is there are three bear witness in heaven, uh, you know, the, the, the father, the son, and these three are one that was actually thrown out because they're not in the most ancient, ancient manuscripts. They have been found to be forgeries. So from the beginning, your belief of who Jesus is has to be examined way more than what you have uh, you know, uh, presented to us. But besides that, um, and I think that we covered some ground there with just some preliminary remarks, my two uh, biggest reasons why uh, I can't accept the Christian Jesus and I would more likely and not more likely, but a person would be more likely to hopefully accept the Muslim Jesus is that the Muslim Jesus is closer to a human being anyway. That's number one. So if we can all agree that Jesus was at the very least a human who walked around in Palestine 2000 years ago, then we won that part of the debate at least because I'm here to say Jesus was a, a human, just a human. And I think we can all agree on that. On the other hand, he has a very heavy task, uh, which is to prove that he was actually God. But if we were to disprove his source from the beginning as being something that cannot be relied on fully, then a safe person would say, I'm not going to take my belief about God from a book that I've seen has been tampered with. And then you come back naturally to your, uh, to your neutral position, and that was Jesus is a man. We can at least agree on that. Um, I think I've presented in the, the, the prior debate and just now enough evidence to know that 
for sure the Bible cannot be trusted 100% and all the statements of Jesus are not all from him. So we cannot uh, accept Jesus being God or being anything else you want to describe him as coming from your book. Um, into some more reasons about why the Bible is unreliable. And I'm not sure if the audience needs any more reasons. I'm sure the Muslims don't. But for the people who do still believe that the Bible should be taken 100% without question, um, I want to remind the people and maybe teach this as something new to, to, to a few of us, um, that the four Gospels are, I think they, they, they can be described as word of mouth translations of what Jesus said. Or they were attempts at capturing the word of mouth translation of what Jesus said. Why do I say it like that? Because it's very important to know that when Jesus walked around and talked to people and talked to people about himself, he was speaking in Aramaic. The four gospels are written in Greek. So there's already a translational difference. Whatever Jesus used to say, and I, I think it would, it would be valuable to know, how did he pray to God? Which words did he use at certain times? Because, for example, in the Quran, God is called Allah, and sometimes he's called Ar-Rahman, and sometimes he's called Ilahi Nas, and he's called the God, he's called the most beneficent one, he's called the God of mankind. And I find that valuable in my life, to, to, you know, to, to know those kind of details about God. So just knowing how Jesus, uh, you know, conceived of this thing in his, in his language, we're far removed from that. So we're already one step removed from the real Jesus when we go to the Bible. When we go to the Bible, we're in a whole nother language, you know. Now, who wrote these four? A am I done? No, you have 15 seconds to tie it up, brother. Okay. Um, when I come back, I'm going to mention, I'm going to go more into depth about my two reasons why uh, the Jesus of the Bible can't be true. And um, I think I've, I've said the neutral position in Islam is that Jesus is a man. And we can go from there establishing why he's a prophet. Okay, alhamdulillah. Okay, so I'm not sure uh, where Christian prophet Ovi Yates is. Uh, I'm here, man. Okay, you're there. Okay, alhamdulillah. Okay, great, great. Okay, uh, so if you are ready to proceed, do you, are you going to turn your camera back on or... I didn't know that. Huh? Okay. Okay. And I thank both of you gentlemen for tying it up right there uh, 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 within that 15 second time span. And help them run. Okay, Olga, do you, you need some time or you? Team me. Go, go ahead. Are you seeing me? Uh, no, no, we don't see you, but uh, we can hear you. And let's not worry about the video right now. Let's, let's go on. Because oh. I can't, I, uh, I don't. Okay. Okay. So whenever you're you're ready to begin, we'll we'll start your 15 minute, uh, the first presentation, 15 minutes. Okay. So, um, one other thing that I, I I noticed that this brother do, he said the Bible is corrupted. The last the last time his debate with um, Stephen Atkins, he said, and I quote, um, the Quran came because the previous scripture were co uh, corrupted. So. He's, he's lowering towards the uh, uh, lowering people to believe that the Quran was co uh, corrupted from uh, before Muhammad came into the scene. But that is total ignorance because listen from your own Quran. See, you jumping around, putting trust in um, in um, uh, what you call them historian. I don't. I, I'm, I'm putting. I'm putting my trust in your God. <laughs> I don't want to be dealing with no historian and historian. I'm going to use some historian, but I'm putting more trust in your God because that's a big man in this, in this debate. The big man is not historian. The big man is your God. So what we're going to do now, we are going to go to Quran 2, verse 91. And what we see in here, because of what you told Stephen and what you are saying, the, uh, the Bible is, is corrupted and all this stuff, we're going to show you that what is corrupted is our mind, 
or the way we think about things and the way we're trying to present something better than another thing that is there and 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 definitely is better than what we are actually trying to present watch watch this and when they were told behold in that god has sent down they said we believe uh, you know when we were told believe in that god has sent down they said we believe in what was sent down to us and and they believe in what is beyond that yet it is the truth confirming what is notice present tense what is with them now we're going to sai international who's going to con uh, um, um, say it just in the same way just a little bit paraphrase just a little bit paraphrase sai international said while the truth is confirming that which is with them that which is with them so you are telling us want to sell this propaganda that the bible is uh, is is um is um corrupted and you go and you said oh a quote a verse in john 5 that says uh, there's three that bear witness in, in heaven you know what i like about the bible my brother how the scholars work daily so that they tell you that that's corrupted where is your in your Quran? Can somebody say something corrupted? The manuscript is burnt, so no one can tell you that your Quran is corrupted. That's why I started um, like this. That, that I started out like this. There is a dangerous creature hiding behind the God of Islam and the Prophet as Islam. This creature is the enemy of truth. That's why I started out like that. Because I know where you were going to come, in, come from, my brother. I love you very much, but I know where you're going to come from. Anyway, as I say, as I say, in Quran, this is your Quran. I don't care about you and your historian right now. I'm eating the historian, but I'm eating your Quran. Inside your very Quran, my brother. You have a verse in Quran 9, verse 31, your very Quran. So you could deny your Quran, ignore your Quran, and jump all the way around. You cannot escape tonight, brother. Inside your Quran, the trend, uh, this, is, this is what inside your Quran. They have taken the scholars and their monk and their Lord beside Allah and the Messiah. So even your Quran is telling me who my messiah is my brother i don't know what was happening to muhammad at that moment when he decided to write that but i'm telling you your quran is confirming what i'm saying so you could jump to the scholars and jump to all the scholars even find one in jamaica that's where i'm from this is the, what i'm trying to tell you right now i'm emotional because truth must prevail over folly and what i'm telling you right now your quran and you could go around and jump around the real, the real Arabic read the very way. And I'm sure you knew that Sai International, whoever the translators are, for Sai is International and also um, here, they decided to put also right between it to make it look like something different, but that doesn't change it. So the, the translators put also in it. So as I say, the Bible told us, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess, even the tongue, the tongue that is behind Muhammad and his Quran confess that Jesus is Lord. So you run to your, 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 um, your, um, what you call them, your um, historian. But be, uh, let, let's go to your historian. Let's, let's look at what your uh, um, historian says. Because we, we are in the 21st century, my brother, where internet is everywhere and people can defend what is out here. And we don't have to listen to everything because you run from Christianity because you weren't very equipped. You run from Christianity because you did not put yourself in a way where you can be equipped to, to, to tackle certain things. So you run because you, you have no tool to tackle. But I do have the tool to tackle. Okay. Look, look, um, look, look, look at what the, the, the historian has said. Uh, before I go even go to the, 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 um, that, what the historian has said, let's um, establish something more when it comes to your Quran, what your Quran says. Um, let's, let, let's look at Quran um, 12. Quran 12, verse 101. 
Okay, so in Quran uh, 12, verse 101 from Sayy International, we see there was certainly in their story a lesson for, for those of understanding. Notice, those of understanding like me, maybe not like you, but like me, my brother, and the people who are listening out here who are wise people, people like me who have understanding. Never was the Quran a narration invented. So here this Quran is saying like, oh, for people of understanding, look into the history of the people of the past. Never was this uh, um, Quran an invented narration, but a confirmation, confirmation of what was for, uh, of what was before it, a detailed explanation. Notice what this Quran is saying. And let me show you how you Muslim are making your God out to be a fool. Allah would be a very, uh, one of the, uh, the foolish person or the foolish being in the, uh, stupidest being in the universe. If he allow mankind to corrupt, corrupt the stories which contain a lesson for men of understanding. Because how can he come and tell me, I am verifying something that doesn't exist. I come with the Quran to verify something or to confirm something that does not exist. You are trying to tell us that Allah is too careless to pre preserve the history for men of understanding to see that he is telling the truth and not telling a lie. Your God is saying in the Quran that the Quran is not an invented story, but a confirmation of the existing scripture. But you Muslims are indirectly leading us to believe that your God serve. What will prove for men of understanding that Quran is not invented? How can you today tell me that the Quran is not invented? You are going to step on my scriptures and saying that um, my scriptures is, is, is in, um, corrupted. You cannot tell me today, you cannot confirm for me today that your Quran is not inv invented if, this, if your God cannot keep the, 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 um, the scriptures intact. And that's okay. what you're not okay. realizing what's going on here. Please, please, I don't mean to interrupt you, but, but I have to that, interrupt you as, as the moderator uh, and to just inform you to try to stay on topic because the topic of the debate is... We are on, no, he got our topic. Brother, 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 don't interrupt, don't interrupt. Please don't brother, interrupt I'm the moderator. Me. I'm the moderator please. of this debate. I'm the moderator. You're of not a debate. debater. Don't you're interrupt all off the topic. debate. Don't interrupt the debate. The brother go on. Brother, listen, uh, I'll put you on mute just briefly just to inform you that as the moderator of the debate, I have to inform you to stay on topic of the debate. You're, you're way off topic. The topic of the debate is who is Jesus? And you're all off on into the Quran and, and those things. So I'm gonna go ahead and unmute you and let you go ahead and proceed. I've stopped your time. You still have about five minutes and 33 seconds left. Okay, I'm, I'm, play, I'm taking you off of mute. Uh, I have to do it yourself over there on your side. Olga, are you there? Olga, Olga, Olga. Christian prophet, are you there? Okay, maybe. Muted, muted. All right. Okay, okay. So, uh, you, so still have, you still have five. You've had, you have five minutes and thirty-three seconds left in your in your first presentation. Your first. Okay. Presentation. All right. Okay, go ahead. So, so, okay, what the what the brother is is doing is trying to take away the power of the Bible. That's what he do. He's trying to take away the power of the Bible by coming up with his. Act, uh, um, stuff, try to take away the power of the Bible. But uh, you're not going to be allowed to do that um, tonight, my brother. Okay, what happened? He talked about Mark. Mark, um, I don't care if he takes the old thing to, 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 to disprove his, his, his point. He talked about Mark um, 
six, uh, nine to, to 20 was, did not, was not uh, available. But that, uh, that's, a, that's, the, that's false information that you are giving to the people. He said it was not available in the earliest manuscript. It was not av available in the earliest manuscript, but guess what? Um, the, way Mark, the, the way Mark ends so abruptly make people have to wonder, like, why would this man hand this thing on, on a note like that? And another thing that we, we must realize is, is, is this. Justin Martyr and Taishan, people like Justin Martyr and Taishan who live in the second century, knew of the long exist, uh, uh, the long ending, uh, that the long exit ending existed. So when you're saying that it did not exist, you're telling people fraud because you're not coming with the full um, information. Eronymous who live about 150 um, AD to um, 200 AD, quote from the long ending, verse 19. So people before that time was quoting the long ending, verse 19. Um, you have even um, Justin Martyr, quoted the, the long engine ending verse 20. So this ending exists just as long as Mark uh, 16 verse eight. The problem that we have is, is we, we, we cannot, um, you, you are high, cannot say um, where these documents are, but we can, we can point to people of more essence that quote from these documents um, prior to to to, um, to to the time when the uh, um, these documents are dated. Uh, uh, the ex existing document is dated. That's what I'm trying to say. So these people quoted from uh, manuscripts prior to the the, the time when um, these documents that are now ex existing. So we can say that the document existed. It's just that we haven't found them. There is a lot of things to be found. So you, um, when you go and say that, but so let me go back to the, the, the scriptures and, and started to read because this, you cannot prove that my scripture is, 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 is corrupted. And the important of even Mark, when you look at the importance of Mark, people are so good, so good. These people who are protecting the scriptures are so good that they say, hey, because we cannot prove this, let's take it out. Because we cannot prove this, let's take it out. But notice what God can do. God did not leave one witness. God never at one point have one witness. And that's what I love about Christianity. The God of Christianity doesn't come with one witness. The God of Islam have one witness, Muhammad, but the God of Christianity doesn't have one, one witness. No, not at all. So let's go back. John said in the beginning, was the Logos, and the Logos was with God, and this very Logos was God. And when you and, and, and he identified the Logos in verse 2 as a person, and then when you go to verse 14, what did John say? And the Logos became flesh. This person who was God became flesh, became man, and we behold him as Jesus, full of grace, the Son of God, full of grace. As I say again, John 17 verse 5 told us that this Logos existed. This is Jesus saying, Father, glorify me with the glory I had with you before the world was created. What is that doing? Confirming what John says. Confirming what John say about Messiah. You want to go to historic historian. I don't want to go to historian. I want to go to your uh, your Quran. What your Quran says. That's what I want to go to. But anyway, now look what happened to uh, uh, um happen. If you look at uh what Daniel in the book of Daniel, you you look at the book of Daniel. What Daniel says about Messiah. If um, consider Daniel 8, verse um, 10 to 11, and um, also verse uh, 25, in which we read 
um, we look at it and, we, and what we see, we are talking, we are seeing um, about the son of man. We are seeing about the son of man who, um, who, who is going to come and the son of man come upon cloud. It's coming on cloud of heaven. Who is the son of man that comes on cloud of heaven? Okay, Olga, and, and that is that is your time for that first uh, presentation, first fifteen minute presentation. We do thank you for that. Okay, uh, Brother Kareem, if you'd like to begin your your uh, first fifteen minute presentation, you can begin. I'll start the time whenever you begin speaking. Actually, you're on you're on mute right now. But hold on one second. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. We're not, we're not hearing you for some reason. Now? But yeah, we can hear you now. Yes. Okay, all right. So um, I, I have the choice now pretty much to either start rebuttaling what he says or continue on with my presentation. But um, it seems like, you know, uh, it seems like I probably should, should, you know, show the audience something really quickly here. So I think one of his biggest problems in um, the way he's looking at the information is that he is, uh, he's not putting in the time. For example, I'm gonna show you a very clear example of a, a major error he made. And um, it's so easy to prove because it's only based on grammar. So this is gonna be recorded. Show this to your Arab Christian friends if you don't believe me. Let's look at the verse where he says that uh, in the Quran that Jesus is actually God. Um, we, even before we get into this verse, we have to understand, and I think we can all agree, that um, th the Quran, its biggest push is Tawheed. It's God is one. He doesn't have sons. He doesn't have daughters. All of that is explicit in the Quran. So knowing that, when we come across a verse for a Christian that you don't understand, you cannot assume that the Quran is going to blatantly uh, um, oppose itself or contradict itself when it's all throughout. I think it's fairer to, to try to exhaust any other possibility than to think that the Quran is going to tell you in one place, Jesus is not God explicitly and in more than one place, and then tell you he's God. So let's look at the verse. It says, Ittakhadu. they took, this is a verb and it's plural. They took, ahbarahum. this is a object of the verb. They took their monks. And in Arabic grammar, the object of a verb, so the thing that they're taking is always mansub. It always has a fatha or something uh, equivalent to it. So in this word, we know this is an object of what they took as gods besides Allah. They took number one, ahbarahum. And, and who are these? These are the people of the past who performed uh, polytheistic um, uh, uh, you know, things and, and didn't believe in God in the right way. So these people, God is pretty much explaining their mistake. And it says, they took their, 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 their uh, rabbis or monks. Uh, both words are similar. Ahbarahum is probably better as rabbis. And ruhbanahum uh, is the second thing they took, which is their monks. Arbaban, as lords. And then here's the key of um, next part. Min from dunillah or literally besides God. So they took their ahbar and their ruhban. They took their monks and their rabbis besides God. Now there's a word right after the word God, which is wal masiha. Everyone heard uh, uh, the fatha, which is mansul, which means this is another object of what they took as lords besides God. There's two reasons we know that al masih the Messiah here is, is talking about uh, the the uh, an object that people took as a polytheistic uh, 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 way to worship God, they took him also with them because all of them have fatha. So in Arabic grammar, it's well known. Again, show this to anyone you have to. It's, it's, you know, anyone uh, who studied even a little bit of Arabic will see that he is completely wrong and has lied. The other reason we know that here uh, the Messiah is not. Um, attributed to the word God as he is proclaiming is because the word besides God, it's, uh, it's, this is, uh, the, the phrase makes the next word take a kesra. It's majrur. So, min duni lahi. So we know that it's besides God. Had it been the, uh, that, had it been the verses saying that these people took 
uh, their, their monks and their rabbis as gods besides God and the Messiah, if it were to say that, then both words would have to be in the jar, in the genitive. They both have to take kesara. So it, it would say, min dunillahi wal masihi. Understood? So again, uh, because the word al masih is a object of the verb, ittakhadu, they took, then he is one of the things that they took as gods besides Allah. Um, so there's two ways actually to prove that, and it's very clear. And um, that's just one of the clearest ways I can prove right now that this guy does not know what he's talking about in the least. Like this is literally grammar that kids, kids six, seven years old, learn in their schools and in, 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 in places that are, are, are Arab or they, they use Arabic as their official language or the like. So that one, you know, it, it's sad. It's really sad that, you know, and I, I can give you Arabic classes if you want, and then we can set something up so you can understand more. But I had to take so much time just to show you, and it may be sufficient enough, just that by itself to discredit everything he's saying because it's such a clear lie. And it's not, he's not intentionally lying, but he's trying to find anything. And it's like, wow, grammar is, is disproving this guy. I don't even need to be here. Um, but, you know, really, this guy has taken us to so many different places. It's hard to rebuttal all that he says. Let me look at some of the notes here. Um, he also, uh, oh, okay. So he, had a, he, he does not understand the concept of the Quran confirming what came before it. So the Quran specifically, in, in a very outright way, says, well, uh, Whoa. Wail in Arabic means destruction. Be for those who write the book, be ad him with their hands. Then they say, This is from God. So that they make some type of profit in this worldly life because of it. So the Quran is constantly stressing that there have been these kinds of corruptions and also the corruption of the heart of the people of the past. They they not only corrupted books and forged books and did these types of things, but also they forgot the message or parts of the message. So this is the reason or uh, one of the biggest reasons why the Quran has come down and God is uh, protecting it from all corruption. Um, the other thing that I want to mention uh, about that is you have to understand that the Quran is not saying every single thing in the Bible is wrong. You have to understand we're on a middle ground. We use the Quran to look into the form of scriptures, and we know that whatever conforms with the, the truth of the Quran, then that may be from God, more likely is from God. But that which is outright conflicting with the truth of the Quran, and not to mention when we speak of the Old Testament, it conflicts with what is in the New Testament. So when we see those types of discrepancies, then we know that that's because of the problem in the New Testament, not the problem in the Quran. Where, uh, so again, I hope it's clear that when we look at the Bible, we understand that there are many truths in it. Not everything, but many truths. For example, concepts, the concept of monotheism. So when you read a verse that says that, uh, and, and he brought a verse here, and let me kind of explain so he gets a better understanding. I believe in Surah Tawbah, no, no. That's Brother, Brother Kareem, why, why are you looking for that? I just want to remind you as well, uh, and I, I realize that you're, you're trying to address the points that he made. He, he, he was... Uh, a bit off topic in, in regards to the topic of the debate. So I want to remind you just as, as well as him to not stray from the actual topic of the debate, which is, yes, 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 absolutely. Uh, which is uh, who is Jesus? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. So let, let's go ahead and do that. Um, I, I urge the people just from what I've already explained with the Arabic language, I urge you to not take this guy seriously. All, all respect that is due to him is due, but in terms of speaking about Islam, you know, it, we're, we're on two different planes here. But let me go ahead and try to complete uh, a little bit about why uh, the Gospels are unreliable. And he leaned so heavily upon them that I'm glad that I can go into this now and our brother redirected uh, the conversation. So he loves to use John. Now, John is a very interesting Gospel because it's the last one written. Um, but that's probably not the only interesting about it. One of the more interesting things about it is that John is seen by the majority, majority of biblical scholars in our time to be a more fabricated 
version of the life of Jesus than any of the others. Why? Now, the, the stories of Jesus that have been collected into the New Testament have been evolving through time after uh, Jesus left the scene. And by the time John began writing in the year 90, um, his form of Jesus was already evolved and higher and more greater than any of the forms of Jesus uh, that were kind of portrayed in, in, the, in the former gospels. And we know this, and, and the, the benefit of knowing this is to know that John invented many sayings of Jesus and put them on his lips. There's a clear evidence for this, and I want to establish this now. When Jesus was alive, if John's portrayal of Jesus is correct, then Jesus went around portraying or uh, uh, proclaiming who he was in a very outright way. He has statements that if you heard it, if you heard anyone say it, it would probably be the most important thing you heard the person say. For example, me and God, or me and the Father, referring to God, are one. If someone just said that to you, you you're claiming to be God. Or you say things like, before Abraham was, all those years ago, I am. So all the, and there's many more statements where Jesus is pretty much walking around using all these I am statements. I am the bread of life. I am the one who has come from heaven. Many, many I am statements where he's just clearly telling people that he's divine. So I understand why our brother would, would look at John and say, it's pretty clear here that Jesus is, is, is um, divine. He's, he's God. The problem is, if John is correct and Jesus went about saying all these things, then I think that anyone who ever came in contact with Jesus or stories of Jesus, like Mark, like Matthew and Luke, who came into contact with stories of Jesus, then probably the most important parts of the stories when Jesus came, comes out and says, I am, you know, I and me and the father are one. These types of clear, you know, statements of, of divinity. The problem is in all three gospels before John, Jesus says none of that. You will be hard pressed to get him to say anything about himself. Not, you know, he, he, he's, he's more mysterious in, the, in, in, in these forms and he's a lot more human. But by the time you get to John, he's saying all of these things. Now, my, I have to ask our Christian friend and hopefully he, he can respond. If the writers of Mark, Matthew and Luke knew that Jesus said, I am, that he said uh, before Abraham was, I am, me and the father are one. All of the, all of the tons of, of these types of open statements, if they knew he said that, why wouldn't they write it? Wouldn't that be the most important thing? This itself shows that there's an evolution between the Gospels because the former Gospels are missing these huge and, you know, fantastic statements that the last Gospel said. So either Jesus said it or he didn't. Either they knew that he said it and didn't write it, the most important things that he could possibly say as a human being, or they didn't know. And it's most likely and all, I'm going to say the majority of the biblical scholarly community say that John fabricated these statements. And it's a, it's a result of the evolution of Jesus throughout time. So, and, and, and I've seen in the chat, someone said it was a, a weak argument to mention word of mouth translation. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not using that as my argument. It's one of three. It's one of the weaker ones. But I think it still holds weight. Why? Because after Jesus, we know that the first gospel was written for, uh, in general, the gospels are 40, 50 years after him, in general. So after Jesus, 40, 50 years after them, people started writing. Where did they get the stories from? They were word of mouth. They were word of mouth that, that were spreading in places where Christian, Greek-speaking Christians were thriving. So they eventually come to them and they write these stories that they heard all these years later in a, in a whole new language. Um, uh, the other thing about the Gospels, and it's important to understand kind of their history, is that they're not eyewitness accounts. And if you say that eyewitness, uh, there are eyewitness accounts, then the earnest of proofs is upon you, not upon me. Why? Because they don't claim it. None of them claim to be eyewitnesses and none of them claim to be, uh, I'm going to
gonna, I'm going to stop short of that, but none of them claim themselves to be eyewitnesses. So you have stories written by Greek-speaking Christians 40, 50 years later, never met Jesus, never met any of his disciples. These people are hearing stories and they're writing them down. No wonder how in John, you have this fantastic Jesus that has evolved, but the word of mouth tradition has already been evolving uh, for years after Jesus, before they were uh, the, the, the stories were even written down. Um, the other thing, and, and so we talked a little bit about the evolutions of the, of the gospel. That's just a, 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 the tip of the iceberg. You have to really look into that. The, the, the evidence is overwhelming. Um, he mentioned about Mark. I wanted to come to Mark. He is pretty dead set on believing the ending of Mark is actually for Mark. Um, I'm tempted to use the, uh, the old uh, you know, debate tactic where we actually go to Mark and you prove it to us. But I'm going to stop short because you know that in Mark, if you believe that ending is true, then you believe that true believers, which I assume are you, can drink poison and survive, right? This is the type of nonsense that has crept into your book. The majority of biblical scholars, not just this guy, majority of biblical scholars say that these verses were fabricated and added on later to, the, to Mark. But if you want them, if you want to believe you can drink poison, um, I'm, I'm sure that as with a name of as Christian prophet, you could prophesy what what your uh, end would be if you ever tried that. But um, Jazakum uh, Allahu Khairan. Okay, Alhamdulillah. Okay, brother, thank you for within that time limit. And uh, Olga Yates, uh, uh, Christian Christian prophet, uh, if you would like to uh, begin, matter of fact, let me make sure you're off of off of mute. Uh, and uh, if you'd like to begin your 12-minute rebuttal, your 12-minute uh, first rebuttal, you can, you can start that. I'm going to begin with the last thing. Okay. Let, let me reset the timer just briefly, and let's make sure that your, your audio is coming through clear. I don't know if you want to try to turn in, turn in your uh, video on at this point, but uh, whenever you're ready, I'll, I'll start the timer when you begin. Okay, so the last thing that the brother say, he says, um, have anybody drink poison and, and, and survive? What do you expect a Christian to do? Go about and, and, and get a glass of poison and then drink the glass of poison? What did Jesus say to, that's why I said your source is very dangerous, brother. your source is very satanic. Your source is so satanic. What did Jesus say to, to, to um, to Satan, when Satan asked him to, 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 to cast himself down and, and all these stuff. What did Jesus say? Brother, I didn't ask you anything. Thou shall not what? I didn't ask him. Please, 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 don't chip in, don't chip in. Don't chip in. You, you, you see what I'm saying? L look yeah. what you're trying to do. So we should go about drink big poison. You, you're saying we should go about to drink poison. Your source is satanic, brother. I'm gonna tell you straight right here. Your source is very satanic, your mindset is on a very low level. I'm gonna show you one thing. Did Muhammad survive four years after, after drinking poison? Didn't he survive four years after drinking poison? You see what I'm saying? So you wanna tell me nobody at all history have ever drink, uh, any Christian at all in the history have ever drink poison and survive. You want Christian to go up and take a cup and drink poison. Is that what you're talking about? Anyway, all you do is assumption upon assumption about uh, uh, um, Greek Christian writing this and assumption and up as, uh, assumption upon assumption. Uh, here you know, if I look at the way your Quran is written, you said there is no eyewitness of the uh, 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 the gospel. But if I look at your way your Quran is written, you know what, Luke. Luke is a killer for, for, for you guys. Luke is a killer for you guys. Because what Luke told us, Luke says, I'm writing precise things to me. How was your Quran written? How was your Quran written? Your Quran was given from a so-called angel to um, Muhammad to these reciters. And then many of these reciters died in a war. And then what happened? These reciters came and gave it to Wa'u, Umar, I think, uh, and Uthman. So, was Umar and Uthman the reciters, or was somebody else recite the Quran and then give it to them? 
Somebody else recited the Quran and gave it to them. So they are the witnesses, my brother, the eyewitness. They were the one who Muhammad gave it to. So in the same way, when, when Luke was writing his, uh, of, of, of the, the, the gospel, he got it from the eyewitness. He plainly tells you with fairness that he got it from the eyewitness. That's preservation. That's truth. That's justice, my brother. What you are trying to slam is going to slam you. I'm going to show you one, another thing that you say, man. You say Jesus was walking around claiming to be God, he, he, that he is divine. I'm glad you say that. At least you are proving my point that Jesus is a result of divinity. Jesus is a result. Jesus, a man, is a result of divinity. I'm glad you say that. But look what you do again. You say, oh, why is Luke, why is Matthew and, 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 and Luke and, and Mark didn't write the way John write? That's where your mind is going. What if these brothers come together and said, you write this, I write this, you write this. You don't know how they write what they write. You're just assuming, brother. You are just assuming. So you come into a debate to assume. Who, why did you take this debate if you are only here to assume, brother? If you are only here to assume, why did you take this debate? When I start the debate, I know who are you coming, brother. Not that I'm disrespectful but it is a comic, in a comedy way. What I see here, the source that you come with is why I establish my debate on this. I will repeat without hesitation because of love for you and my fellow mankind and the love for the real God. There's a dangerous creature behind the God and prophet of Islam. And this creature is the enemy of truth. This creature is the enemy of truth. Look at what's going on right here. I'm going to identify this creature for you. Since you want to know, you, you, you're coming with these snaking ways. I'm going to identify this cre creature. Oh, 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 Inside oh, the Abu Khan. No, no, don't interrupt me, brother. Don't interrupt me. Don't interrupt me, brother. We're not here to, to insult one another. Uh, it's, no. Gods one another I'm going to get to my point. Not, I'm going to get to my point. Okay, you brother, did not well, I'm, 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 I'm going to get to my point, Kenny. Okay, Kenny, fine. let my time I, be. I, I don't want to put you on mute, but if you don't, if you, if you don't, uh, let my time be. Let my time be. My job as the moderator. Please bear with me. Let, let my time be, Kenny. I'm asking you is to be respectful. I don't see you uh, jumping. Brother, Kenny, leave please. my time alone. Okay. Brother, brother, listen. Uh, you're reacting in emotion, in, in your emotions. And let I'm me be you. emotional. That's okay. That's something for me to be emotional about, Kenny. Okay, brother, listen. Let me be emotional. Listen, I'm, I'm asking you as the moderator of this debate, we're trying to make this civil, we're trying to make this respectful on both sides, and I'm asking you to please- No, you are not trying to make it disrespectful because you're jumping in right now, Kenny. Brother, I'm the moderator of the debate. This is the job of the moderator. All I'm right, not, okay, I'm okay, moderator. Let, let, you me, talk, let me speak, moderator, let me speak. Okay, brother. Well, let well, me speak, moderator. As long as you understand that and what I'm trying to get you to, and trying to clarify is that you are not insulting to the individual you're debating, or the religion or the God. And that's that's just a simple request. That's a matter of simple decency and respect. And and if if uh, if Brother Kareem was to do the same thing to you, I would tell him the same thing. As Muslims, we don't we don't attack other people's gods, and I would uh, expect the same courtesy from from you on your side. Okay, so go ahead and proceed. Let me let me show you something. No, you are attacking, he's attacking my God. That's why I told you this debate is not going to be a, a pet. I'm, it's not a pet thing. And I'm going to be, as I say, I love the brother. I love him as a human being. But I'm going to go hard and he's God. And I'm going to go hard on Mohammed. I'm not going to uh, hold back. You want me to hold back, but I won't. Um, so when we look at the source behind this, that's why I started the way I started. That's why I started the way I started. Okay. What we see here is there's, there's an instant where Muhammad say, hey, I heard my revelation like the sound of a bell. That's Sayyid al-Bukhari 4 verse 438. He said, I heard my revelation coming to me in the sound of a bell. Then later he said, angels ate bell. That's Sunnah Abu Dao, at 25, So what we see here, Angels ate bell, but Muhammad heard his revelation in, in, in a bell. Then later he goes on and to say, the bell is the instrument of Satan. 
That is Sai Muslim 5279. So why was Gabriel speaking to this man? What we have here is why I established before the attack on Jesus. But we hear this brother confirm that he, Jesus, was claiming that he is God. He, Jesus, was claiming that he was divine. And that's what we are here to establish. So I already won the debate. I already won the debate that this brother is actually acknowledged that the Bible, that is my source, is saying that Jesus is divine. He said Jesus, he, he, John was saying that Jesus is divine. This brother have no proof, no proof at all, how these um, disciples of Jesus went about to write what they write. But here this brother come with assumption that it was some Greek who wrote it and all this stuff and want to allure to all this stuff. You see what I'm saying? And I, notice what I do with the ending of Mark. Notice what I did with the ending of Mark. I can take it and I can leave it alone. We don't need the ending of Mark to, 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 to establish the truth because God, according, I think it's in the book of Deuteronomy where Jesus says, where God said, same, <laughs> where he said, Truth is established, a matter is established with two or more witnesses. So if one witness fall off, we have Luke and the eyewitnesses that testimony from Luke, we have Matthew and we have John, we also have Peter who confirmed that Jesus is divine. We have who confirmed that Jesus is the the author of life. The author of life. We don't have to go to Paul or none of these people. We can stay right within the gospel and prove that Jesus is divine. And my brother helped me to win the debate because he, um, John said that Jesus is divine. The only thing this brother want to do is attribute John's writing to some other, uh, other person. John wrote the book of, uh, of Revelation, and in the book of Revelation, he, had, he, he, he shows that Jesus is divine, of uh, divine origin. So when you, what are we here to debate? You proving that your Quran is a big book, and my, uh, and, and, and my, uh, my Bible is not? According to Sahih Muslim book, according to Sahih Muslim, Point two point Mohammed say he stated and gave him so how is your Quran gonna be explained? Beginning your Quran of no when is trying to discredit what is before when your Quran say I I come to confirm what is with them. And in your debate with Atkins, Steve Atkins, you said the, the Quran came because the books were already corrupt. Brother, you have no foot to stand on. That's why I started out the way I started out, because I could see you coming, my brother. I saw you coming like I, 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 I saw my, my baby coming. My wife is pregnant. Praise to the Lord of, uh, of us. And I could see my baby coming. That's the way I see you coming, brother like a pregnancy. You, you, this thing, man, is bigger than you and I. You're trying to mute God. You can't mute God, brother. You can't mute God. Let me show you. I got to be emotional, man. You cannot mute, mute God because even in the Old Testament, Jesus is, he, 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 he is mentioned in the Old Testament. Jesus told us, he said, hey, your father, Abram, Hope to see my day, and he saw it, and he was glad to see my day. How did Abraham see Jesus' day? Just before the, the, the just before just before the destruction of Jer of um, Sodom and Gomorrah, Jesus came to Abraham, and I will prove that in my next round. Okay, okay, we thank you for that 12 minute uh, rebuttal.
And uh, I would just, uh, just a, a word of advice. I, I know in your emotion, you, you, you seem to be yelling a bit and maybe it's uh, affecting the audio because you were coming in and out a little bit. And I agree, we can't, we can't mute God, but if, uh, if you're yelling, I may place you on mute. Uh, I may have to place you on mute temporarily so that uh, you can calm down a little bit. That way we can hear everything you're saying clearly. We wanna make sure that we're hearing everything. That you're I don't saying. want you to mute me. Brother, I, what I'm telling you is that when you're, when you're, you're yelling, it, it's, it, 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 it's cutting into the, the, the feed of the, the mic. And so it's, it's affecting the audio. Right, so I don't want you to lose anything that you're saying. I want you to be able to make all the points that you want to make. Uh, so I'm just asking you to make you, you know, okay. Just keep in mind you might want to lower your voice just a little bit um, in, in that process. So okay, so brother Kareem, if you'd like to uh, begin your 12-minute um, uh, rebuttal, uh, I'll start the timer whenever you you begin. You're you're on mute right now. Let me. Uh, Am I good? Yeah, you're good right there. All right, that was me. My bad. All right, so um, let's see. Wow, I'm going to ask my opponent to do me a favor. Please try to take notes of what I say, because uh, mostly every one of my arguments you didn't get right. You didn't understand them at all. And um, for us to, you know, because on one hand, it looks like you're just ready to you know, approach this head on without any regard for what I say or my argument or why I'm logically basing an assertion upon uh, or I'm, 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 I'm basing my assertion upon facts and, and, and an argument. Uh, on the other hand, you, you're making just a lot of assertions. For example, right before you got cut off or before you ended, uh, you were talking about J Jesus seeing Abraham and, and you speak like this about these supernatural things just without any regard that they are merely assertions until you, until you actually prove why we should uh, believe um, you know, what, what you're talking about. But that's just a, a friendly advice. Um, like I said, it, you, you said so much and you went into so many things outside of the debate. It's like I'm even confused at where I should start. Um, I did get some, uh, I received a message that I should mention to you about your flaw and how you understand John. But before I go into that, let me make clear my position, uh, my personal position. And this is what I believe the Quran and Islam teaches, um, that your book, especially the four Gospels, are not to be relied upon because there is a overall error in what the, the theology it teaches and uh, along with some of the messages of Jesus that may have been preserved in them. For example, you see Jesus when he comes into a, a gathering, he says, the peace, the greeting that we Muslims actually use, salamu alaikum. You know, these types of things, you know, it, it's one thing, we're not, we're not denying every single thing, but, um, but again, uh, you can't say that because I read the Gospels and see that the Gospels are saying Jesus is, is divine. I'm not claiming that. And I'm not saying it's true. I'm saying the writer of that book, when he heard stories about Jesus, he wrote what he heard and he may have put his own twist on it, as we have already seen. There's many uh, verses of the Bible that have been clearly pointed out as fabrications. The ending of Mark, the woman given into adultery, uh, the, the Trinity. Uh, the verse uh, about the Trinity. Give me one second. Can you cut my time so I can uh, get my charger really quickly before? Yes, I yes, yes, yes. Go ahead. We we, we can't hear you. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. It stopped at uh, nine minutes twenty three seconds. Okay. I'm back. Am I, am I heard? I'm audible. Yes, sir. Okay. So um, just to make clear before I go into John, um, that again, uh, the, I, my view on these four books are that they were written by human beings upon their own inclination, no, no uh, inspiration. Rather, they heard um, uh, of, of stories of Jesus may be correct, may have been incorrect. At the very least, they were translated into from Aramaic into Greek, and then we have the books. So we're not saying that if I say to you, yes, the book of John teaches that Jesus is some sort of divinity, I'm not saying that's true. I'm not even saying he got it right. I'm saying 
mainly that if he got it right, how come the other four gospels didn't write it? If Jesus were going around making the word, making these statements, quoting, and, and John is quoting him verbatim, and these are, these are true quotes in the fashion, in the outright fashion, that if this is a true depiction of what Jesus was, then all other gospels have to conform. They don't. So we see that um, automatically John has been uh, uh, really fabricating and, um, and making a lot of stuff up that the actual Jesus didn't say. Because if he said it again, they would have been known. These statements would have been in Mark, would have been in Luke, would have been in Matthew. But I want to say something else uh, uh, with the help of, of our brother Akil from Dushuba Hats to enlighten you about John. John in and of itself teaches uh, in different places that Jesus is some sort of divinity. He, he has some sort. But the problem of that is, number one, it's just coming from a random, anonymous, Greek-speaking Christian. We don't know who he was, and he just wrote what the stories he's heard, that's the, the first problem. The second one is that in his own book, he contradicts the Christian Trinitarian doctrine. Why? Because in John itself, Jesus is, um, and again, I thank our brother, he is uh, saying that God or the Father, which he's, in, and in that verse, he's declaring the person, right? If, if you, because, you know, we know the Father isn't the Son. So he says the Father kind of separating him from either from persons or any other deity. He says the father is the only true God. So um, when you when you go into John, you're going to find uh, number one that John contradicts the 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 Christian belief that has developed today. Um, Jesus in John is actually telling people that his father is the only true God. Nothing about the Holy Ghost, nothing about himself. He doesn't even use the more generic word God, but he actually specifies the person. So in, in Trinitarian words, the person of the Father is the only true God. He identifies him alone as that. So, so John in and of itself, and, and in that statement, I think Muslims could have some type of um, agreement to because it agrees with the Quran that God himself, he is the only true God. Um, as far as the other statements of John, um, where Jesus is seemed to be exalted. Again, we have to ask, did this really happen the way John is saying? If it did, then I feel sorry for Mark. I feel sorry for Matthew. I feel sorry for, for Luke. They never knew that Jesus said these things. Um, the other thing that was really shocking that he said, he called the four gospel writers, I'm going to quote, the, the, um, he said, these brothers could have gotten together and maybe developed a plan. This shows the extreme ignorance of our Christian friend here, because uh, these people written in different places at different times, um, some many years later. So for him to claim that they somehow got together and, and I, you know, it was just strange that he had that, that kind of uh, thought. It's well known that these gospels were written in different places and different times. And um, even though some of the gospel writers may have had a version or one, one, of the other gospels, they didn't actually get together and, and like he called them, you know, kind of, you know, you can envision these four guys getting together and sitting back and talking about these four books. It didn't happen like that. And then I really urge you just to do some basic Christian history studies on that. Uh, what else can I talk about? So, um, you know, I kind of want to get into so, uh, another portion of the debate. So I'm going to probably, um, you know, I don't want to, to reach for anything that just comes to mind. I'm really just trying to put forth a sincere effort to show you that um, you're, you're very confused, you're very emotional, and you're kind of not even listening to why I'm arguing that the Bible is, is, is you know, cannot be uh, taken as uh, true, you know, in how it depicts Jesus. Um, on the other hand, the Muslim belief is, uh, is pretty simple, and I think it's pretty much the default belief about a historical character. He was a man. Now, Muslims would say he was more than a man up to the point of being a prophet. That's what a Muslim would say. And this is also not too too hard to, to, to accept that a man could be a messenger of God, a prophet of, of, of sorts. I think the Muslim belief is very rational, very easy to believe, whereas the Christian uh, belief that Jesus is God, um, again, it's... it's um, it's sad that you can believe or, or kind of throw away your monotheism for, for any anonymous book that comes to you. And clearly, it's shown to be, 
inauthentic. It's shown to be untrustworthy. Look at John and look at the logical line that, that I'm trying to, to lay out for you. John says Jesus was going around quote, and making these grand, grandiose quotes and saying that he pretty much saying he's divine. Now, if John actually heard that story and it was really from Jesus all those years ago, then the four of the three people who wrote about Jesus before him would surely know that Jesus during his lifetime stood in front of a person and said, before Abraham was, I am. They would have quoted that. And again, you know, um, you really have to look into why I'm, I'm saying these things. I think the other thing we can mention before maybe I get cut off, I'm not sure how much time I have left. Um, the whole issue about, uh, yeah, actually, three, since it didn't come up, we don't we don't have to open that. I want to end. How, how much time I have here? You have three minutes. Uh, okay, two. I want to end with just a comparison. Um, if a person were to choose the Islamic version of Jesus, the Islamic more historically, uh, maybe maybe historically acceptable because we're only claiming for him to be a man. We're only claiming for him to be a normal man who was, you know, uh, preaching a word of God. You know, this is this is not a far out claim. He's a prophet, a messenger. You know, these types of of, of uh, terms are not easy, uh, not hard to to accept. Um, so I want to do a, a comparison from that Islamic view and Christianity. And what do you have to gain from from the two? Um, if you were to go with the Islamic view, I would I would uh, argue that you have saved your, your your monotheism. Number one, you have saved your monotheism. Why? Because in the Old Testament, um, God is only one. And in the New Testament, I would I think that our Christian uh, brethren would, would would agree that the monotheism they claim is a bit different, maybe in bigger ways than 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 smaller ways, but it's a bit different than what the Old Testament teaches. So in that by itself, you have a huge uh, dilemma on your hands. Will you really modify the monotheism of the Old Testament that's been around for thousands of years for these four new books that that you know have really some uh, troubles? Um, I'm going for them. So you save your monotheism if you just go with the Islamic Jesus. You have God and then you have all of his prophets and messengers and people he has created. There's a big separation. You save your monotheism by accepting the, 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 um, the Islamic Jesus and you are closer to the original message of the Old Testament. And then you have no confusion in your life that is caused by accepting the Christian Bible Jesus. What confusion am I referring to? Maybe I'll have some time later. Um, I'm going to quickly maybe just mention a few. Uh, the confusions that come with you claiming this uh, idea that is uh, that, that you see maybe coming from the Bible, um, you, you have a few issues if you accept that Jesus. First one uh, you have is the whole issue of cosmic child abuse. Um, and, and this has been talked about. Uh, basically, uh, the, the argument is that it wouldn't make sense for God if he loved people and he loved his son the way he loves people, that he would kill his son in the place of people. Just as a judge, if he has criminals in front of him and he loves these criminals, he wants to let them go. It wouldn't make sense if the judge also loved his son, maybe more so, that he would call his son in into the courtroom and say, you're gonna take the punishment of these criminals while your son at that is pleading for his life, as we see in the gospel, which kind of contradicts that whole uh, theological claim that Jesus is on one hand in the story, uh, wanting his life to be spared. And then on the other hand, Christians claim that he wanted to die. Um, but, the, but the whole, um, it, that should be my time. So I have uh, more reasons why Christianity causes confusion and you will save yourself uh, a lot of confusion by uh, the Islamic Jesus. Okay, and thank you, brother, for uh, staying within that time limit. Okay, so uh, Christian Prophet Ogle Yates, I'm going to take you off of mute. And um, actually, I don't see him in the room right now for some reason. Are you there, Olga? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, okay, great, great. All right, so this is going to uh, be your seven minute uh, second rebuttal, seven minutes. And uh, I will start okay. the timer whenever you begin. Okay, so right now, what I'm going to go to the point where he said God killed his son. <laughs> and I'm going to laugh at him. Because you claim you were a Christian, but you could, you're claiming that God killed his son. Um, Jesus came here for many reasons. Jesus is, Paul says, follow me as I follow Jesus. 
So Jesus came as a man, as a role model. So Jesus has multiple uh, uh, functions why he came. So he came as a role model. But he came with the foreknowledge that man would murder him. So when you say God killed his son, as if God was like, oh, I'm going to kill my son. He came with the foreknowledge that he was going to be murdered. And that's why he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they have done. You don't have a knowledge about the Bible, but you want to preach the Bible. That's your problem right here. Anyway, so um, look at the comparison between Muhammad and see which is the most gracious God. <laughs> Muhammad was sent as the mercy to the world. That's what your Quran say. I send Muhammad as a mercy to the world. God sent his son to be uh, an example for us at the same time for knowing that evil men would kill him, he dedicated the blood to satisfy the law covenant. He dedicated his blood to satisfy the law covenant. But look what happened to, to, to Muhammad on the other hand. And you, uh, you want to say, come to Islam, monotheism, like I'm, I'm preaching um, polytheism. I'm preaching monotheism. You, you just don't understand it. But I'm just saying that Look what happened to Muhammad. Muhammad was sent as a mercy to the, to, to the people. And what happened to him? A Jewish woman who the Quran warned him and said, hey, don't take the Jews for, for your friend. This man above the Quran decided to eat from a Jewish woman. So this Jewish woman cooked up some goat meat and poisoned the goat meat. Muhammad eat from the goat meat and suffer. Is, is that suffer. the subject though? Hold on, brother. You pick up something, so I'm going to show you, because you go off and talk about God sinning, killing his son, and stuff like that. So let's, let's talk about this. Don't, don't deep in. So what, God, what, happened to Muhammad, what happened to Muhammad then? He suffered for four years, and, and his wife said, Quick, we have a question. No, no, no. No, ask me no question, brother. Don't butt in. His, his wife said, I haven't seen. You're inviting me to Islam, so let me show you what Islam is. I haven't seen such pain. No one be a pain like that. And at the end of his life, he died like a false prophet, according to the Quran. Okay. Okay. So, brother, once again, the topic of the debate is who is Jesus? And it's been difficult to uh, get to that topic because of the, the inflammatory things that have been, keep being said over and over again. So if we can stick to the topic of the debate, and talk about Jesus and who Jesus is from a, a Christian perspective and a Muslim's perspective, that would be great because that is indeed the topic. So I'm gonna take you off from of mute and let you proceed from there. You still have four minutes and six seconds. And you may need to unmute, this, unmute yourself over there. Uh, then he's, he's talking about uh, monotheism, like somebody is here teaching polytheism. Nobody teaching polytheism. There is one God who manifests himself in three manifestations to show, show his love for humanity. One almighty God who manifests himself in three different manifestations to show him, uh, his love for, 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 for uh, humanity. That's what I am talking about. You come and you, you, you want to bring up all kind of stuff, put things in the de debate. I'm going to um, um, show you the similarities in your, in your Bible when you bring anything that is not associated with this debate. Anyway, uh, um, what I want to um, hit on is uh, you, the way you want to say, okay, Paul, uh, uh, um, not Paul, John teach so much different from the, what the other disciples say. When you have a group of people deciding to, do, to, to write what they write, because they were together, you were trying to say, oh, they were in different place. At one point, in, we know they were together. Everybody knows that from reading. The, the, uh, um, even um, Peter went, uh, not Peter, John, uh, Paul went and, and, and meet with them. So they were together. So all this little speaking that you have saying that, oh, they, they, they wrote in different places, that does not take away the logic that they were together and they could have said, okay, just like you are guessing that is um, Greek who, wrote, who, who wrote, wrote, wrote the Bible, not, not John, not the disciple, but some, 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 um, some unknown Greek who wrote, who wrote, the, wrote the Bible. I could also say, you know, 
they possibly decide and what aspect we need to take this. And if you look at the, the, the pattern of each, each um, um, Bible writer, you see where they come at a different angle. They come at a different angle, establishing what they have, what they, what they, they obtain from eyewitness and what also they know for themselves. So when you come with all this stuff and you, you know, it, it, it's, it, it doesn't make sense. No, you come and you say, okay, J John, uh, um, they, they, decide, they, they did not know, no. The um, other disciples or the other uh, uh, Bible, um, um, New Testament writer did not know. What I found so crazy is this. Inside your Quran, there's a verse that nobody knew before Muhammad re re revealed it about Solomon. Muhammad said there was a time when devils used to dive for gold, dive for treasures. God, Allah used to use devils to dive for treasures for Solomon. Where was that written before? So you see, <laughs> if your prophet who, who, who does not exist at the time of Solomon could come and write something about Solomon, write about Jesus uh, um, um, making a little bird from clay, Nobody knew about that and, and, and bro, blow breath into them, which is, which is the creation, that's creation, and, and, and let them flo fly away. Um, why is it that you are saying that these Bible writers have to write on the same pattern when no one knows about Muhammad uh, and, 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 and his uh, account of um, stone running away with, 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 with um, Moses' clothing and all this stuff? All I'm here to tell you, man, according to the Bible, and you confirm that the Bible, the Bible that I am going with, revealed that Jesus is more than a man. You said he is divine. You said he is claiming to be God. Um, now I go back to Quran 9, verse 31. And I, I, I will show you, like people, not because you don't speak Arabic. Don't let no one fool you, brother. Don't let no one fool the brothers and sisters. We are out here and we, we are living in the 21st century where the internet is. If you go to Quran, if you go to Quran.com and you put in Quran 33 verse, Quran 9 verse 31 and you rub your, and you run your cursor along it, you will see exactly how it read. You don't need nobody to tell you how it read. Okay, brother, and your time is up on your second rebuttal. It's okay. Okay, so uh, brother Kareem, I want to make sure that you're off of mute. And I've got it done on my end. Okay. I'm okay. Here. So you, whenever you begin, we'll start your second. Yeah. Can, can I actually um, make this a, a small, a small change? Can I ask him a question about before I start? Because I want to address what he just said last, last thing. Was he talking, was he just saying that he could run his his cursor across the verse? Was he talking about the verse about uh, the Messiah being, that, that he thinks Allah is saying that, اتخذوا أحبارهم, this verse in Surah Tawbah? Can he answer me? Yeah. Were you talking about yeah. that? You're still? Okay. All right. So let's, yeah. let's go there. All right. Please mute him then. Thank you. Okay. So again, um, Christians, let's do a, a, a experiment. Um, in the beginning, I mentioned that this is being recorded, um, and I'm sure that you can find uh, Christian Arabs. Um, the way that I just broke down that verse, if they have the verse in front of them, um, it, you know, as long as they're truthful, I guess they're not going to outright lie. Or, or you can actually do it yourself. Just pick up any Arabic grammar book, uh, look out, uh, look at how verbs uh, they how they. Um, how they affect the object of the verbs. And, um, and you'll see that exactly what I said is exactly how the verse is. Uh, basically, Allah saying that people took um, Jesus and these other peoples as gods besides Allah. And there's two reasons why that. Kareem, Kareem, uh, can you hear me right now? Okay, so it, it muted myself for some reason. Yeah, I'm it's sure. actually I did. That was my mistake. I was doing something over there in the panel, and it was my mistake. So I do I do apologize. So I stopped your time, and right. and I do apologize. Yes, yes, yes. So so I'm just I'm just.
discussing that he's going back to this, but I've already put forward the, uh, the pretty much the acid test. If you want to know whether he's right or I'm right about the verse, just take this recording, either do the research yourself or go to an Arab Christian that's going to be honest because it's clear as day. The word Messiah is mensub. It's the object of the verb. We also know that the Messiah is not attached to the word God as being um, you know, attached in the way that he's asserting is because the word God there, Allah, is taking a kesra because of uh, the, 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 genitive, um, the genitive phrase that came before it, min duni. We know in Arabic that before min, the next word is going to take kesra. And had Jesus been connected with the word God, just like the word God has kesra, it would have took kesra too, because it would have been besides God and besides the Messiah. Also, he said that the translators added the word also in there. Actually, the Arabic word wa means also, and then and it, it literally is translated as and or also, both meaning the same thing. The word wa, uh, the, the wa is clearly there. No one inserted anything. And um, yeah, the, the word also, if you wanted to know, uh, it's the word wa there. Um, but you probably can't even read one letter from that verse. And, and so I understand your, your, why you fall into that. But um, also, um, I, I want to kind of also um, mention that I, I don't feel uh, very comfortable with him lying and misquoting me. You know, so this debate is now broke, broken down all the way into just outright lying, uh, misquoting people. For example, he said, and he said it a few times, he said, he said, meaning me, Jesus is divine. Now, if you take that quote just on face value, it's a clear lie. You go out and you say, you know, someone asked, if someone were to ask you, how the debate go? And you quoted yourself, he said Jesus is divine. What is, what, it, you're, you're painting me as though I'm telling you that I'm agreeing that Jesus is divine. After I went through this whole spew about how the gospel of John has been fabricated things about Jesus, and we know it's totally fabricated because the other three gospels don't have the most important sayings that are in John that would be the most important thing to write about anybody in their bi biography. If they don't have them, it's clearly that John is the only one making these things up. So John, this un anonymous person that we call John because he was a Greek speaking Christian living 90 years, you know, in year 90 that is, um, all these years after Jesus, and he's writing his gospel at that time. He's the one who's saying Jesus is divine. So please quote quote it like this. He said that, that John claims Jesus is some sort of divinity, but he says that, and, and give the whole, just don't misquote me and, and really make yourself look like you're going to take it to the lowest level possible. Totally change my words, uh, you know, uh, you know, just... Forget about anything I've said prior to it. Just pick out the parts you want and just start asserting that I, I said that. Um, so no, I'm not saying that, that the Bible teaches Jesus is divine. I'm saying that the writer of John specifically heard stories and wrote them down. We come to know now that they're fabricated. He thought Jesus was some kind of divinity, but he also contradicts himself in his own confusion because in Gospel of John, and I can get the verse here, Jesus is basically he, he, the only thing he didn't do was point up and give you, you know, kind of let it be known. The father, he's the only true God, period. And I think that that's pretty, pretty telling about how John, just like the other gospels, were hearing things that may have possibly come from the historical Jesus. That would make sense that the historical Jesus as a Jew would say that the father, that Yahweh is the only true God, because that's something normal from a Jew. Right. But it would be unlikely that he's, you know, he's saying all of this other stuff that John made up. Why? Because the other gospels don't say it. And had Mark known, heard the same stories that John heard all those years later and known Jesus was going around saying that thing, he would have written it down. He didn't know. And that's why he didn't write it. And none of the other uh, gospels besides John wrote them down. Um, how much time do I have left? You have two minutes and 30 seconds. OK. Um, you know what, to move the debate kind of along here, I think that um, I've pretty much established why we, we shouldn't accept the Bible uh, in terms of its, uh, in, in terms of how it portrays Jesus. Um, I've, I've shown that it is, uh, it's corrupted 
Um, there's been additions to it. And it also went through an evolutionary process where each gospel is making Jesus um, greater and bigger than the one before it. Uh, there's so many examples of that. We can't even go through it. But I promise you, if you look this up, Christians, you'll see that there's a consistent, uh, there's a consistent um, uh, phenomenon happening in the four gospels where Jesus is going from one to the other and getting greater and greater until the final gospel is written in John, where John is putting things on the mouth of Jesus that none of the other ones have even heard before, because if they did, they would have written it. I hope that this brother after this can really zero in on some of my arguments and really talk, just talk about them, you know, and you could start with that. How was it? Why was it? That if Mark, Matthew, Luke know that Jesus was going around making the I am statements, all of the ones that you can you pull out of John, that why they wouldn't have uh, told those stories. And um, yes, and there's quite a few stories actually in the Gospel of John that are not in the in the other Gospels also. But, uh, you know, just in general, I think that that's sufficient. Inshallah, I, I, I hope that uh, it gets better from him. Okay. Brother, you still have about 50 seconds, to, unless you want to go ahead and uh, turn it over to him. Okay, alhamdulillah. Okay, so, all right, uh, Christian prophet, Olga Yates, uh, let me make sure you're off of mute. And um, this is going to be your, your seven-minute closing. So whenever you begin, I'll start the timer for your seven-minute closing. Okay. I have to touch on this point first. Okay, so what this brother do is this brother say, because Jesus said, um, the father is the only true God. <laughs> what, what, what we established here is I'm telling the brother from John 1, you, you could go and say, oh, John, do this and John, you have no proof of that. Is what I'm saying, you're just speculating. You're working on speculation. You have no proof of, oh, John was a, uh, um, a person who come later and decide to pick up on this. That's all speculation. Speculation, speculation. That's all you do all night, speculation. I'm reading from my scripture. I'm reading from your scripture. And all you do is speculate. Anyway, but what I'm, <laughs> what I'm going to do here, right here is show us that Jesus said the Father is the only true God. What did I tell him in John 1? He's using that. That's from John. He's quoting from John. So what did I tell him in John 1 verse 1? I said, in the beginning was the word, was the logos and the logos was, was with God and the logos was God. And verse 14 showed me, showed that the logos become what? Man, flesh, man. So if Jesus said, um, the father is the only true God, I don't have nothing uh, uh, against that. Why? I don't care about you coming here to uh, debate Trinitarian. You are debating me, my brother. You're not debating a Trinitarian belief or whatever belief. You are debating me who believe that Jesus is the man that God became. I established that from the early part of my debate. So if the man said to, to the Father, you are the only true God, because the Holy Spirit is the manifestation of the Father and the Son in the in the, um the universe the holy spirit is a manifestation of the father and the son in the universe so when jesus says father you are the only true god he was not lying because the son is man the son became man so when you're beating uh, uh, you're just uh, you're, you're beating a dead camel brother <laughs> and what you what uh, um i'm gonna look at again as you say you know um i'm gonna look at something so you're saying that um um, you're saying that um, John wrote from the uh, um, from I think in 90, 90 AD. You said ninety uh, AD. <laughs> when did your prophet came along? Your prophet came along when and confirm what John wrote. Your prophet came along and confirm. Say, hey, I come to confirm what is in your hand. What is in your hand? That's what your prophet say. I come to confirm what is in your hand. Your prophet said that. And that is written in your Quran. So wasn't John a part of it? Wasn't the, the book of John? Can you prove that the book of John wasn't a part of it? You claim that the book of John was written in, in 90 AD. You said that. But here comes your prophet who cannot make up his mind and said, hey, I come to confirm what you have in your hand. I come to confirm what you have in your hand. 
and your Quran cannot establish if it cannot confirm, if it cannot prove that it's a confirmation. And you want to tell me that the people in John's days, in your prophet days, if John wrote his, his gospel in 90, 90 AD, as you say, in, in, in 600 AD, you want to tell me that the people didn't have John's gospel? Not only that, let's look at, let, let's look at something else. Let's look at something else. Because this brother using craft. Um, let, let's look at something else. Um, according to according to his, his own Quran, according to his own Quran, the um Allah, Allah, quote unquote, because I don't believe there was no Allah. Um is saying in um Surah um, 61, in Surah 61, he said, I will make. He said, I'm going to make the, the people who follow Jesus, put them way above everybody. They're going to be the one who prevail until the day, day of judgment. That's what your, 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 your Quran is saying. The people who follow Jesus, they're going to prevail among, above their enemies uh, 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 until the day of judgment. Who is the one prevailing? People who believe in John, my brother. People who believe in the book of John is the one who are prevailing. And your Quran said that, brother. Your Quran told us that he will make the people who believe in Jesus prevail above those who do not believe until the, day, until the day, day of judgment. And what you see happening now, people who believe in John, that, that is Quran 61 verse 14. In Quran 61 verse 14, we have your, your, your prophet, because there was no God. So we have your prophet saying that. We have your prophet, your quote unquote prophet saying that he's gonna make the the, the, the um people who believe the people who believe in these disciples prevail above Paul and all of them. Who is what is the prevailing uh, 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 belief in Christianity now? People who believe exactly what Paul Paul writes. People who believe exactly what John writes. People who believe in everything that is written. You come here making all this white noise, brother. You're not saying anything. You're not saying anything. You know, and I could go, as I say, you, you come and want to justify this verse, this verse that is written in your Quran. I'm going to go back at it because you cannot escape me. You come want to just justify this verse that is wrote, written in 931. But do you notice what happened, my brother? Your Muslim brother from Sa'i International, from Sa'i International, I didn't write it. I didn't uh, uh, um, 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 translate it. It is your Muslim brothers from Sa'i International that translate this verse. And what they come up with? They come up with it exactly how it should read. And they show us that they insert the word also in, in it. Because you speak Arabic, you're going to come here and try to trick us. But you can't trick us because your brothers already reveal the truth to us. Your brother already showed that they are the one who insert also in the middle and it read exactly like I am reading it. Exactly like I am re reading it. And let me read it again for you. I'm going to read it again for you so you could see. They have taken the scholars. Look, look what happened. They have taken the scholars and their monks as a Lord beside Allah and the Messiah, and the Messiah, son of Mary, and your, your Sai International reveal that they are the one who insert also in it. You cannot escape me, my brother. Okay, all good. And that was your seven minute closing. So, uh, Brother Kareem, whenever you would like to begin with your seven yes. minute closing, I'll start whenever you, you're ready. Okay. Am I audible? Yes. Okay, all right. So we've reached the end, alhamdulillah. But I wanna show the audience a little bit about the insanity of this man's intellectual arguments. <laughs> and uh, minus, probably minus the word intellectual. However, um, with the verse, I, I, you know, brother, just be humble. Know that you're not the authority when it comes to Arabic. Uh, my bad, my bad. Go, say, say it, 
Let me, let me, let me stop your time. Yeah. Okay, I'm back, right? Okay, brother, very good. Okay, where did I stop? You said he was not the authority when it comes to Arabic. Yes, 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 yes. In this debate, he has to be humble enough to at least, at least say, you know what? I'm going to go back. I'm going to read it. Brother, when you have the Arabic right in front of you, and I broke it down grammatically, and I teach Arabic grammar, and I'm telling you, bring it to a Christian friend. Let's just leave it alone. It's a waste of time because you're obviously wrong. Like, like it's a thousand. I, I, you know, usually I would leave some room and in all regards, you know, to say maybe I could possibly not be. I'm telling you, brother, 100 percent, you are incorrect. Just leave that alone because you're making yourself look crazy right now. But um, after that, I also want to show you a little of the insanity that he has been driven into with, with these uh, ideas that he has. Uh, he, he said, that, and this is the way he talks, and it kind of just gives you an understanding of, of how it, it, his mind is moving too fast for, it, for him to even understand he's cutting himself. He's, 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 uh, he's really just throwing blow, blows at his own self. So he says uh, things like this. He says, uh, you're quote unquote prophet, right? So speaking about a man who has changed the whole entire world, no matter if you hate him or love him, his name is the most used name in the world. His book is the most memorized book in the world. He's one of the most beloved people in the world. He has been named the most influential man in history, but he says, you're quote unquote prophet, meaning he has a high regard for this word prophet and he doesn't regard this man who has changed world history as a prophet. So he says, quote unquote prophets, but at the same time, he calls himself a prophet. So he, he the insanity of just what he's doing right now is, is beyond me. Um, so, you know, really, I kind of just want to end the debate because I see that he's not really willing to be humble enough to say, you know what, this guy, you know, he he seems like he has. He's telling me to to bring my bring this recording to 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 someone to to review. I'm telling you, brother, you're wrong with that verse and the majority of the things you've been talking about tonight, you're you're wrong at. Um, other things I can probably close out with is um, he says that the Quran confirms John. Look at the extreme ignorance in this. The Quran says, injil." God gave Jesus the gospel. So is our Christian brother going to actually tell us now that Jesus was walking around with John? If he's thinking that God in the Quran is talking about John, then he, he's obviously, again, falling deep into his insanity once again with, with this, this type of belief because obviously Jesus did not walk around with any of the books of the New Testament. None of them were written at the time. So God is talking about a revelation that was given to Jesus that was not even necessarily written down. God says, God is going to teach him the book. The, and the hikmah and the Torah and the Injil. He's going to teach him the Torah and the gospel and the wisdom. Is wisdom something that's written down? So the, the gospel of Jesus in the Quran could have may have well been just a recited revelation. And the essence of that revelation came down to his disciples, but slowly got mixed in with other alterations. And then we have many years later, these four books written in another language, far removed from the language of Jesus, far removed from the time of Jesus, far removed from the people that were eyewitnesses there, the Aramaic-speaking uh, Palestinian Jews who were there, far from them. Now we have these four books that claim all sorts of things about Jesus. But of course, these are not the Injil because the Quran defines the Injil as given to Jesus. And historically, do the math, Jesus was not around for the for the, uh, the New Testament. So the Quran is not confirming the New Testament. Rather, the Quran is confirming the concepts of the Injil that still remain with the Christians. So if there was any good at the time of the Christians during the time of the Prophet Muhammad, he was referring them to that, saying the part that is still from God that may be with you, look into that and, and cling on to that, especially the monotheism that, that, that they may still have had with them. So these are the things that the Quran is telling them to, to turn to. That is which, uh, it's for, 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 for instance, if I were to learn something about the Quran and that the Quran is the speech of God, but I learned something about it. If I were to leave and not have a Quran with me, but, but I was teaching 
uh, you know, about the Quran, someone could say that he is teaching that which is in the Quran, right? Without the Quran having, uh, having to be, or without me having to uh, teach every single thing. It's, it's just a general statement. I'm teaching what is in the Quran. And may, I may have been just teaching a small section of it. So the Quran is not referring back to the, 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 the Injil as though it's talking about the New Testament. That's one. And it's not referring as though it's talking about all the concept of, uh, of Christianity that it had with them. It's only referring to that which is uh, confirmed by the Quran. So again, the Quran claims that the, the Injil was given to Jesus directly, therefore it cannot have been the, the Gospel of John, therefore you're lying again, saying the Quran confirms John. You see, when I quote you and then I give the explanation, you, you see how ridiculous you sound, uh, because that's a quote, the Quran confirms John. You know, it's like, it's nowhere in the Quran does it say anything remotely like that. Uh, he also said, Said, those who follow Jesus to the day of judgment. Um, those who follow Jesus to the day of judgment in uh, Muslim understanding are Muslims. So yes, they will be victorious. Actually, the uh, Islam teaches that on the day of judgment, each ummah, each nation that had gone before will come in front of God with their prophet in front of them. So when Jesus comes with his nation, meaning the people who heard about him during his time and followed him, when he comes, those people are not only Muslims, but they're victorious Muslims. Why? Because they stuck with the pure monotheism that Jesus brought. They didn't worship him, but they worshiped the God that he said was the only God in the gospel of John. Okay. Alhamdulillah. Okay, brother. So that was great for your seven minute closing. And that is uh, the, the, uh, the closing of the, the main portion of the debate. We still have the five questions uh, back and forth. Uh, and since uh, Olga, uh, the uh, Christian prophet Olga Yates, uh, since he began the, the uh, debate, we'll, let, we'll stay with that same format and allow Olga to ask five questions of uh, Brother Kareem, and we'll give uh, we'll give two minutes for for the answers. We'll give two minutes for the answers and one minute for a reply from the from the uh, questioner. So, two minutes for the answers and one minute for a reply from the questioner. So, uh, Olga, are two minutes for what? Go, go go again. Repeat it again, brother. Okay, we're going to let you begin uh, the questioning. Five questions for Brother Kareem. Yeah. No, no. Wait, wait, one second here. I, I just want to make a quick correction. Okay. I, I'm, I'm going to forfeit my questions. I don't, I don't really think the debate is even worth going into. I'm going I'm to give gonna up my side. My if, he wants, you know, if he wants questions, it's fine. It's no problem. I'll answer yeah, I'm them, not going to forfeit but, my question. I, I think because... that we've done enough. Uh, okay, sure. Okay, so, so uh, Olga, if you want to, if you want to present five questions to Brother Kareem, he, he's willing to answer your questions. Okay. Uh, but he said he's going to forfeit the first his, thing, his five questions to you. The first. The first thing that the, you did, you, you, you know, I'm going to make this little statement and then ask the question. You said I was lying. So I'm basing this question and the fact that you claim I was lying. We look at uh, Surah 61, verse 14. You said this was talking about uh, Muslim, that this is talking about Muslim, but it's, it's not true. I'm going to read it and then ask my, ask my question. Oh, you who believe, be supporter of Allah as when Jesus the son of Mary said to the disciple, who are supporters of Allah? He asked him, who are supporters of Allah? The disciple said, we are supporters of Allah. And a fraction of the children of Israel believe and a fraction disbelieve. So we support those who believe against their enemy and they became the dominant. Who became the dominant, my brother, in Christianity right now? People who believe in Paul and people who believe in John. Okay, so is that your question for him? So my question is, who became the dominant? Okay, let me uh, let me um, answer that by first uh, readjusting his understanding. So uh, it's well known, and, and it's kind of, uh, maybe he's actually hearing this for the first time, and if he is, then uh, know that this is very mainstream. This is something so standard. You, if you just do a cursory study of Islam, you would know that the Quran is even mentioning these stories because it considers those people Muslims. The Muslim, <laughs> re relax for a second. The word Muslim in Arabic literally means someone who submits. 
So if you wanted, you can you can put that. They were people who submitted to who? Allah. You see it in the verse. And a person who submits to Allah and follows the prophet of their time, that is a Muslim. Just like Muslims believe in the prophet of our time and all the prophets that came before them, because those are all of our brethren <laughs> in submitting to God. And submitting to God is called Islam. So anyone who submitted to God, when it comes to the Quran... You didn't answer my question. Relax for a second. Relax. So anyone you who's talking to I'm, I'm going, I'm going from the relax, I'm I'm starting from the beginning. Bear, bear, bear with me. Uh, bear with me. Go, go ahead, Kareem. Go ahead. Okay, so so yeah, I was muted also here, so I had to take it out. All right, so um so uh what were we saying? So yes, so the Quran uh is is claiming that all of the previous prophets and their followers were Muslims because they submitted themselves to God and they believed in the messenger that was sent by God of their time. Um so these people in the verse were actually Muslims. Now the verse is saying and, and the Arabic is it's it's a lot better if you go right to the Arabic because you you would understand it better. So it says well asbahu dahirin. I don't even have to look at the verse because I know it. And and that's Telling, you know, you should understand who you're talking to. You're not talking to someone who's just picked up the Quran for five minutes before we started the, the debate. So Dahirin could have a lot of meanings. It could mean they are apparently the ones on the truth. Just put yourself in the lives of uh, Palestinian peasants of that time. I I, I don't have I have 50 seconds. Yeah, but you have 15 seconds. Go ahead. Okay. No. Okay. So anyone who held on to the belief of Jesus during his time of hardship, during any persecution that they uh, that they had to undergo and they held, for, uh, they held firm to monotheism, whether they died poor in the middle of the desert with God, they are dahirin. They are apparently the right ones, the people upon the truth. So you have to look into the Arabic understanding and you have uh, the, the Arabic language and you have to understand what Islam believes about the former people from the very beginning. Okay, okay. And uh, uh, Oga, if you'd like to make a, a reply to that, you have one minute. Okay. What what we see here is dominant, according to Sai International. Well, I'm reading from the government of 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 Saudi Arabia translation. He said they become the dominant. Who is dominating in Christianity today? Who is dominating? People who believe in Paul, that, G, um, that Jesus is a sacrifice, that Jesus is, is the man that God became. People who believe in John, that Jesus- Question, question, brother, question. Oh, hold on, brother, I'm talking. Don't, 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 don't do that, brother. Don't do that. Allow you to talk. So people who believe in those people, that's the dominant religion right now. That's the dominant belief. So you could come and you twist and twist and twist. You're not talking to um, somebody who was born yesterday. Um, when you look back at, at, at John, you see early, early Islamic scholar who support before you, brother. You, who to me... Okay, it, your it, question it, time is coming to an end. That's okay. okay. <laughs> Islamic sources... Um, support Paul and John. Yes, can I answer? Can I answer since his question time was okay? So I want to I want to go back into the just very quickly. I'm not going to take much time. So um, he's saying dominant. That's an assertion. You're asserting upon pure ignorance. You can't read the Arabic. You don't know. You wouldn't know what was the law in that in that verse if it smacked you in the top of the head. So you, you're just asserting and you're expecting me to what? To, to cling on to a translation of a person while I can read it and I don't even read the English. I, I don't need it. When, when you, I don't cling on to any translation. I cling on to what is apparently the truth. And God is not going to contradict himself in the Quran in this type of way that, that you are uh, asserting. So um, okay. as far as the word, uh, as as word Zahirin, again, uh, look up this uh, word. You're going to see it has many meanings and it can mean many different things. But 
uh, in general, anyone who believes in God and believes in the monotheism that Jesus taught and that Muhammad taught, then they are zahirin. They are the ones who are uh, victorious in their own personal lives. And maybe the people around them caught a glimpse of that. Maybe the people were seeing the splitting between the early Christians during that time, but they were people that knew that these people, they are the ones who are obviously still following Jesus. They are zahir. And zahir means apparent. Um, dominance, I, I'm not sure about uh, uh, about uh, this type of translation. I don't think it's... Uh, okay, so let's, let's let the brother uh, present his, his, so you, his next question. Uh, okay. Uh, okay go so ahead. what I want to ask the, bro the, the brother is that, you know, you're here and you're saying that, oh, uh, uh, you, you're, you're, you're Hispanic. Uh, um, um, you weren't born a, uh, knowing the Arabic language, but you come here telling people that you know more than the people who translate Sai, uh, Sai International. That's what you come here trying to, to, to let people believe. Is that a question? No, it's not, uh, uh, um, since you make that, that uh, rebuttal, I'm, Can I'm, I reply I'm, I'm, to I'm, it then? Can I but this is, your, this is a question to you. Could I reply why I say that though? Why I don't take to any. No, no, no. no, no, no the person who no, translated. I'm I'm no, asking you question. You get to the question. This is my question. Yeah. No, no. You you make you answer my question, then you make go a speech. Go ahead and ask your question. Go ahead, go ahead and ask your question. Please. Yeah. Okay. So you come here and you want to tell us like Sai International is lying. That's that's uh, 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 and you know the truth. <laughs> Sai International is showing is us that. Is that a that question? They, listen, brother. You're listen, asserting, listen. but get to the question. Yeah, listen, sure listen, I'm leading up to my, my answer. Don't, don't butt in, man. Don't butt in. We are having a debate here. <laughs> Sai International is showing us, is telling us that we insert the also into the verse of 931. But here you are, who not even born in the Arabic language, you just learned the language. And, and you claim that, oh, I know more than the government of uh, um, Saudi Arabia and all okay, their okay, colleagues who okay, come together I'm to write. Counted, I've what? counted away 15 <laughs> seconds. Uh, please go ahead. Oh, here, here it is. Next question. Do you know more than Saudi International? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Listen, um, <laughs> it's hard to, to not really be astounded by the ignorance. But um, you should know, Christian prophet, that... Um, I, I can hear him. Can you can you mute him? Uh, here's, uh, here's not sure. Yeah, uh, I'm right here. He's being possessed. I'm right here. Or something like. Okay. Uh, okay. So yeah, I have to laugh. I heard a, okay, well, you I make it funny, instead brother. Of, instead of laughing, allow him to uh, go ahead and answer your question. That way we can proceed. Okay. So so okay. Really quickly, one okay, thing. Okay. Go ahead and answer the Yes. One thing that I think you would agree upon is that if I brought you any translation of the Bible and asserted this is the 100 percent true understanding of the Bible, you would probably say to me, hold on, there's like 100 different translations of them. And the second thing, aren't all humans last time we checked fallible? You're going to sit here and tell me that I have to take the translation of someone when I've already studied the language, the same thing he has studied? Like, it's not hard. This verse is not hard at all to understand. It's not PhD level Arabic. Actually, the Quranic Arabic is very appealing to all of the intellects. A person in the desert could understand it in Arabic, and the most affluent PhD holder can gain oceans of knowledge and wisdom also from it. So, you know, this, you know, the Quran is not something that is, uh, you know, at one extreme or the other. This is not, it's not rocket science that I have to 
you know, be a governor to, to understand this. With that being said, you have to know also that Sahih International, or I'm not sure who, who you're quoting, um, that's just one of many, 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 many different attempts and tra of a translation. And I'm sure that all of them being humble human beings will say in the beginning, this is only our attempt to give you the understanding of what the Quran, but as human beings, we're always going to fall short. And this is a, a place that I think could have been translated better because the Arabic doesn't uh, support what you're asserting, nor does the whole Quran as a whole support it. That's the thing you're missing. If you look at the book as a whole, you would know how insane you sound right now saying that the book is saying that Jesus is God or that, <laughs> you know, the followers of Paul are, uh, it's a lot. Anyway, fuck Okay. All right. So that was the second can, can I so uh, no, okay. proceed with no, if I should use okay, if I have, should use you your minute, one minute to reply. Go ahead. My my, my mistake. You have one minute. Okay, to yes, I do. If I should if I should use your mentality, the way you approach the, the, the uh, um uh, uh, the, the Greek scripture, if I should use the same mentality that you use and say, Oh, they made this up and they do this and they do that, mom, I'm just gonna show you that Muhammad wife, who was Muhammad didn't say wife, they made it up. That's what you said. Some, some, some guy in. I, I, I'm no, they I, I'm tried from... their best to translate it. And as human beings, we all can do better. We're not perfect. What are you talking about? You don't know what I'm talking about because you're not listening. No, Fuck you it. don't know Fuck what it. I'm talking Go about. Ahead. You told the people. You told the people that they made up the uh, 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 um, the, the gospels. Uh -huh. That John make up his gospel. You told the people that oh, John make ahead, up his gospel. Up. You told them that John make up his gospel. You did. Okay, you told well, them that it was some uh, um, Greek who don't even know nothing who made I'm up the I'm referring to the to translators that we were just discussing. We discussed translators for about five minutes, so of course okay. I'm not speaking about John. I'm talking about the translators. Okay, so let's let's proceed to the to the third question, uh, Olga. Okay. <laughs> so so you see what I'm saying? It, 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 this this brother is is um on a level, man. Okay, what I what what I want to um. I want to I want to touch on is that the the brother goes as as far as um you know the, according to the Quran God will uh, preserve his scriptures according to the Quran that's what the Quran says that God's gonna preserve his scripture what the Muslim want to do is say only the Quran is preserved but if if the if the um Quran come to confirm what is before or what is in their hand, according to one of the Quran verse, actually say what is in their hand, what, it, what they have in their hand. If the Quran come to confirm what is in their hand, how can we tell that the Quran is a confirmation today when the other book is corrupted? That's, that's your question? Yeah. Okay. Sure. I'm sorry, I, I, I didn't hear, I didn't, I didn't catch that. Say that one more time. Okay. There is a Quranic verse. I, if I, my computer is running so slow, I don't know what's wrong with my internet. Is because it's slow, snowing. I could find it that says the Quran came to confirm what is in their hand. There's an, another Quranic verse that say the Quran came to confirm what is with them. That's Quran two verse. I think ninety three. I think I read that this uh, already. Quran two verse ninety three. What is with them? How can you prove that your Quran is right if the confirmation is corrupted? Okay, so again, um, when, a, when the Quran mentions that it confirms anything of the past, it's speaking about the parts of it that are actually from God. As the Quran has a dual uh, understanding it puts forward that uh, the scriptures of the past do contain some truth and they do contain some falsehood. Um, in that verse, I think this is one of the clearest verses to understand this duality because Allah says, فَلْيَحْكُمْ أَهْلُ الْإِنْجِيلِ بِمَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ فِيهِ So let the people of uh, the Injil, of the gospel, let them, uh, uh, let them rule by what God has sent down in, in, uh, therein. Meaning, if you had a book, say you had, you, you, just for instance, you had a book on, on your uh, kitchen table, and uh, it's a fully written book, it has whatever it has in it, and, um, and I came down and I put some notes in it, 
And then I came back to you later and I said, hey, take uh, the information that I have put there in uh, the book that I have put there in. Am I speaking about the whole book? If I say rule or make judgments by what I have put inside of it therein or what I, I have revealed therein. Am I speaking about the whole book necessarily? No, I'm specifically- Can I answer about, the question? Can wait, I answer wait, wait, the question? I'm, I'm still answering. I'm, 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 I'm not asking you. It's a rhetorical question. It's a question that doesn't need an answer. I'm just getting you to think. Because oh. I have put something inside of it and it's a mixture. I said, I didn't say judge by the book. God didn't say judge by the book. He said judge by what he has revealed in it. Just like if I said to you, judge by what I have written in it, in that book that you have. So it's spe specifically linking that part that is true back to, to God. And it's not speaking about the whole thing. That's what the Quran says as a whole. Please read the whole book. Because if you read the whole book, you would see consistently in the Quran, it mentions that people have corrupted the scriptures, number one, and that God has also allowed some truth to stay in and that you should search for that truth and then come to Islam based upon that. That's the, the, the two important things you can take. And the last thing, because those scriptures were corrupted and it's not that easy to find the truth in a scripture that contains both a Allah says, We have sent down the reminder and it's upon us to guard it. So he's speaking about the Quran taking an oath, uh, taking it upon himself to, to guard it uh, because there is this, uh, there is already an understanding from the whole of the Quran that these scripture had been corrupted. That's why he's specifically telling you about this, this thing that he's going to perform now until the day of judgment. He's going to guard this one, unlike those other ones. Okay. All right, Olga, we went over a little, little bit there, but that's fine. Okay. Okay, uh, 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 Olga, rather, if you'd like to make a response to that, you have one minute. <laughs> what, what, I see, <laughs> what, what I see, man, is this. This brother is actually writing the Quran himself because there is nowhere in the Quran that say, hey, I'm talking about uh, uh, um, this... Uh, uh, um, not the old book, I'm talking about this. The Quran is talking about the book, man, the book. The Quran is talking about the book, that the book that he gave to the Jews and to the uh, Christian. There was even an incident where, where Muhammad, uh, somebody was gonna uh, um, uh, kill somebody for, for um, idolatry. And they, I mean, they, 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 breaking up a little bit, brother. They were corrupted. Huh? You, were, you, were, you were breaking up there, but uh, you're, you're right there. Bring, your time. They bring the Torah. Okay, so if you'd like to proceed with they the, bring uh, the Torah to Muhammad, and when they can I can I can I just respond really quickly? That was the last one, correct? The, no, 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 no. You can't respond until I finish. You can't respond until I finish, brother. Your time is that. finished. Your time is finished. You get your That's time, right. I get my time. No, my no, time is not finished. There's yeah, a, brother, when you are brother, interrupted, brother, he gives you time. Why can't I get time when you're interrupted? Brother, that was, the timer went off at one minute. It, that was, that was your time for the, for the, your response to his. I, I break up. I break up. Can I, can I finish what I was saying? That brother, was not my have, time. I break up. Just you like you are giving him time seconds. when you break up. Yes, you have about 15 seconds. Go ahead. Okay. So Muhammad was given the Torah and Muhammad said, I believe in what was revealed in, in, in it. I believe in what is revealed in it. So you're going to tell us, oh, 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 um, it's just part of the book and it's part of the, uh, part of the book. That, that's not true, brother. Question, question. Okay, then that was, that was about question now. Okay. Was that okay. supposed to be his last question? Because I want to respond to that semi-question. No, he, that, that, was, that was actually- No, that was my fourth question. Yeah, that was his fourth question. So he has, he has one more question. But I can still respond now, correct? Uh, if you'd like to make a, a brief response to that. No, yeah, no yeah, yeah. Okay, so I, I want to give him another challenge, some homework. If he knows any uh, Christian speaking, uh, Arabic speaking Christian. I actually know one. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I Let me just respond, one. brother, because you had your question time. You asked a sort of a semi question. Let me respond. So, um, okay, so this verse. Had it been talking about the whole of what you think is the gospel, 
then it would have said, Aliyahkum Ahlul Injili bil Injil. Notice how I said that and bring this recording to your to your Christian brethren so, so they understand also that I'm not making this up. It would have said, let the people of the gospel judge. And, and, the gospel. and trans wait, translate, wait, wait, translate, wait, 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 translate for the people. Translate. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Translate for the people. Why are you speaking in English? I am. In, I'm um, trying to. In, in, um, you're not letting, you I'm trying to. I'm just giving it to you so because I'm not like you. I want to give you the proof so you can have the whole story. Listen. This is my words. If the Quran was talking about the whole gospel as you would perceive it, it would have said something more like, let the people of the gospel, فَلْيَحْكُمْ let the people of the gospel judge by the gospel. Let the people of the gospel judge by the gospel. But it doesn't say that. The Arabic wording is different. It says, Let the people of the gospel judge by what God has revealed in it. Okay? So let the people of the, of the good news judge by what God has revealed in it. Not let the people of the gospel judge by the gospel. There's a, there's a small distinction there in Arabic. And if you understood Arabic, you would see the distinction. And along with history and the understanding of the Quran's approach to the Old Testament, you would understand that this verse is making a differentiation, saying that there is some of some truth in the, good, in the good news, this gospel, this Indian, there's some of what God has revealed inside of it, and that's what you should take. Had it been talking about the whole of the gospel, uh, as you perceive it, it would have said something else. I'm just trying to draw your attention to the different, uh, the, the, the grammatical construction of that verse, so you know it's not referring to necessarily the whole book. Rather, it's more likely based on the grammar to be referring to just what is inside of it that Enzalallahu fi, that God has revealed inside of it. Okay, just as if you had a book with you and I put something in it and it was a mixture of it and I told you, hey, judge by the, that which I have put in the book. I didn't say judge by the book. That verse does not say judge by the Injil. It says judge by what God has revealed inside of it. So if you believe you have the gospel, I encourage you to judge by what God has revealed inside of it. The good that you have with you, you're, you're, you're trying to find the monotheism in your life. Judge by that. Go with that. Don't go with all of it. Okay, so, so let's go ahead and proceed to the fifth, the fifth question, uh, Olga. Olga Yates, are you, are you there? Let me talk, brother. <laughs> you come here to establish, you come here to establish uh, Islam. Don't and forget, you got one minute. My, 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 question is, my question is this. My question is this. Why is it that your God have the truth, have the truth, and this is his last and final prophet to, to identify the truth as you, uh, as you guys are claiming, but he have so much satanic operation around him. Like, for example, like, for example, the attempt suicides, the um, the quoting of of of, um, of giving quotes that Satan command him for good, Muslim twenty eight point four uh, um, fourteen. Okay, so in summary, what what is your question then? <laughs> That's the question. Why is there so much Satan around um, your prophet? Okay, if so let's let's, let's give him two minutes to answer. Go ahead. Yes, yes, yes. I'm tempted to not even dignify the question with a response, but because there's good in the response, I'm going to say it anyway. Um, the Quran is very interesting in that uh, when the people claim it's from Satan, it uh, pretty much belies them from the very beginning because the Quran teaches you when you read the Quran, say, God, protect me from Satan. So would Satan want you, when you're reading his book, to ask God every time before you read it to protect it, to protect you, sincerely protect you from Satan? It doesn't make sense. Let alone the vast and expansive good that the Quran brings to each and every person who believes in it sincerely. It's a ridiculous uh, statement and question. Uh, it just goes to show how uh, far gone 
some people have become with the hatred for Islam. As far as um, you mentioned some type of suicide attempts, uh, this is not found in the Quran. This is external things that uh, you're, you're referring to. I would also see those stories as actually proofs for the truth of Islam, if they were true. Why? Because if a prophet were, or if a person were to lie, coming down from a mountain and was ready to lie to his whole community that he's seen a uh, angel, uh, would he actually be in any fear of an angel or confusion? or emotional turmoil. But if you have a story about a man who was so shooken up by a situation that the whole world was turned upside down, this is pretty much upon the uh, criteria of dissimilarity. It's not something that someone would make up. Okay, so this shows the truthfulness of the experience of the Prophet Muhammad if his emotional turmoil was to that extent. It only is a proof that he was sincerely experiencing something and the Quran bears witness later on. Uh, and, and when I say later on, I mean in 2019, it's clearer than ever that the Quran that came to him was from God uh, based upon the mathematical miracles, the scientific miracles, the way the, com the commands of the Quran command him and reprimand him and all the other the different ways the Quran is a miracle. Uh, well, alhamdulillah. So I thank Allah that we are Muslims, and I thank everyone for attending. I, I hey, just, uh, uh, my, my, let me let me get let me get my one minute, one minute in. Um, the, the Quran have no scientific miracle. That's another debate. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> because Muhammad believes that women have sperm, Muhammad believed that the okay, resemblance. So I'm going to go now because um because you're just going to go the into of a, a whole bunch of other things. Yes, but so we can Muhammad, have this again though. We just have to stay on target. Stay on. So the, the Quran doesn't have any. Uh, any okay, yalla, um, yalla. Salamu alaikum. La uridu an asma akthar. And you can translate that, inshallah. Anyway, so uh, as, as I was, I'm going to go now, uh, and 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 he can talk if he now. wants to. Okay, brother. Assalamu alaikum. And uh, alaykum again, I, I, I would like to uh, thank everyone for tuning in. Um, for tuning in to Kenny Bomber Live and consider this TV where truth is made clear from falsehood. I do want to encourage everyone to uh, uh, seek the truth and seek knowledge and be a reader instead of a repeater. Once again, I, I stress that be a reader instead of a repeater. Alhamdulillah. The only way you can come to sure knowledge is if you seek sincere truth. And sometimes the truth that we seek is sometimes uncomfortable for people. But you have to ask yourself, am I seeking truth or am I seeking comfort? Knowing that, that the truth is, is not always comfortable. So in saying that, uh, I do wanna uh, thank everyone for tuning in once again to Kenny Bomber Live. I consider this TV where truth is made clear from falsehood. And I encourage you to, uh, um, to, uh, um, to be kind to one another in, 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 in your religion. Uh, matter of fact, the, the Quran tells us to, to argue with them in ways that are best and most gracious and not to offend one another by uh, talking uh, disrespectfully about their God or about the prophets or um, their religion and uh, not to attack the pe people themselves. That's a, a oppression. As Muslims, we're not supposed to oppress people even verbally. So uh, I encourage everyone to be polite to one another when we're engaging in these types of conversations. Uh, we're doing it to, uh, to gain knowledge and gain understanding and not to create the walls of divisiveness amongst us. So uh, I do leave you by saying assalamu alaikum, rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, peace be upon everyone who's watching. I am Kenny Bomer, I'm the author of the book, Consider Islam, Disproving the Pages of Propaganda, and the forthcoming book, Everything is a Test, Truth Been Made Clear from Falsehood. And I'd like to thank, uh, once again, Brother Kareem, uh, uh, the tutor, alhamdulillah, for his efforts, and also thank uh, the uh, self-proclaimed uh, Christian prophet, Olga Yates, for his participation in this debate. And uh, I look forward to engaging these brothers again on Kenny Bomber Live on Consider This TV. If you could please go to KennyBomber.com. I'm actually gonna post some links uh, to, uh, to uh, this video on YouTube as well as on Facebook uh, to give for the Dowel Fund um, and also to give for the, uh, the GoFundMe campaign that's set up for Change for Change Foundation. Um, we're gonna post the link for that and I encourage you to give for the sake of our God, our creator, and be reminded that this is a salakatu zuriya. This is a, for perpetual blessings on the day of judgment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you. And if you can't give, then simply uh, submit prayers on behalf of our success and our trying to uh, do dawah and trying to share the truth in the beauty of Islam in, in our actions and our deeds and in our um, in debates and in everything that we engage in. 
So once again, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen. La ilaha illallah wa shalallahu wa muhammad wa rahmatullahi wa rahmatullahi wa I bear witness there's no God other than Allah. And I bear witness that Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is his final servant and seal of all prophets. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar.